is the Glass Cannon Network. Hello and welcome back to Friends of the Pod featuring Chaosium's RuneQuest. Tonight is the third and final installment of our, uh, our RuneQuest playthrough, but I have a funny feeling this won't be the last time the Glass Cannon Network hangs out in Glorantha because last week oh. was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool as shit last week. I hope this is one long combat today because I want yeah. more. <laughs> <laughs> well, good news for you, Troy, is that uh, I've done zero prep. So, an entire <laughs> episode of combat, I can do. Let's do that. All right. Yeah. You're immediately shot in the neck by an arrow. No. <laughs> <laughs> Look around for your assailant. Yeah. The combat begins. Yeah. I feel like we got really lucky, right? Last time. Like, it, yeah, look, this is a deadly game. It seemed a little it bit is. not easy, but we crushed. Like, we, we mashed. You, you was did. that luck? I, maybe it was luck. Well, part of it was like, part of it was because they there was a there was a rule of the combat that I was not introducing for your first combat, uh, and, and, that, and, that, and that rule is that rule is and now because I didn't want to upset everybody with lots of numbers, but if everyone looks at their character sheet oh, with their, where their weapons are, you'll notice that your weapon has a section called HP. Now, a lot of people have assumed like, oh, is that the hit points of damage that my weapon does? No, that is the hit points of your weapon. <gasps> so, when you parry, there is actually a chance that your either you or your opponent's weapon will be reduced in hit points. <laughs> oh, uh, no. Therefore, which, you know, this is where it comes into like if you uh, try to block a like a mace with a spear, yeah. a spear is more likely to split in half. <laughs> then so you might be like I probably should just just dodge because my spear breaks I can't attack you back so yeah mm. but yeah, I will pull my such cool. punches today that's really <laughs> cool I remember uh, doing a parry with my shield and yeah that's uh, normal but the attack was a fail the attack missed mm -hmm. so I remember as a result of that I got to, to then like hit the back. enemy yeah smack him back so like is that do, would the shield take any HP damage in that sort of situation? Yeah, so in that situation, yeah, the the the, the shield I think takes a flat one. It depends on my little chart. All right, it depends so, yeah. because remember uh, there are in RuneQuest there are like five states of results. There's fumble, failure, success, special success, and critical success. Uh, and on the cool GM screen, as well as uh, on a chart in the starter set, and obviously in the rulebook. Uh, there's there's a chart which lets you just track, you know, it was a special success to a fumbled parry and it tells you exactly what happens. Yeah. So I, I um, saw that. I don't want to spoil it. that. Yeah, yeah. There's also a cool <laughs> there's also a cool similar table for the amount of damage taken to any particular location and how mm. how you are maimed. Um, mm. So I'm kind of given this last episode. I kind of hope someone dies in the first five minutes, like just really aggressive, <laughs> just if to I, remind everyone that the game is deadly. Like, yeah, yeah. It comes if I get hit Detroit. once, I will go down. That's why. I, <laughs> yeah. That's why I stand in the back and just call Do spirits. I, exactly, call spirits. Yeah, Brian, spirits. you you may not know this, but the last time we played together, I think I killed Troy. Oh, wow. I wasn't there. I wasn't invited, right? despite being a friend of the pod, but that's okay. <laughs> Did Apparently, I? I'm a friend of the pod, <laughs> but I don't remember that invitation. That sounds right. <laughs> I think I killed both you and Jared's well, characters. Let's see what happens. Yes. Yeah, you never know. Yes, you did. Uh, in the uh, the hell game was that? Joe, you ran it. Simbarum. Simbarum. Oh, Simbarum. Ah, yes. I've been saying Simbarum. God, what a moron. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't think Super any of us round. know how to say it. <laughs> no. Anyway, well, I would not be surprised if, uh, uh, if if uh, Vilma uh, was started killing some PCs. Either uh, yeah. uh, Vilma <laughs> seems very, very Maybe scary. On the off chance anyone's tuning in for their first time, or if they've given it, I don't know, something like two weeks or something between watching episodes rather than one in which they're airing, uh, let's just remind everybody of everyone's character name. Mm. And everybody's yeah. uh, everybody's uh, character cult, which uh, in this game is sort of the most defining trait of your your character. Uh, starting with with Josephine, with with Vil Vilma, who I will not no. call Wilhelm once. 
Um. <laughs> <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> um, her name is Vilma T. Wolverhavenshire's son, and she <laughs> is a rune priest of Gagarth. Gagarth. Gag- I'm still back and forth in how <laughs> the best pronunciation is, but Gagarth is the wild hunter who rides across all the world seeking lost or lonely spirits as food for his hunt. And uh, I want to ride amongst that wild hunt. And you like know, an evil cowboy. Yeah, yeah, it's full of outlaws and and exiles and what have you. Trustworthy folk. <laughs> totally chill. Uh, and uh, Troy. Oops. I'm Rex Mannheim. <laughs> I can't remember the voice. I think it's it's kind of a Charlton Heston voice. I am an assistant shaman, assistant to the regional shaman <laughs> of Dakafal. You can't see my face wherever I go. I have this shimmery veil covering it mm. to mimic the mirrored face uh, that Dakafal is often uh, portrayed as having holding a mirror instead of a face. Black robe. He's a weird dude. Uh, very, very... Dr. Fall is who? Is the god of... The, the judge uh, of the, the Jesus. Dead. Like judgment, right? Like Judgment, uh, that's what it is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like at the, at the gates. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we, last time he was just calling spirits. He can kind of see through the veil to the uh, those who have uh, lived before. Um, and so... Since he's very, very squishy, he has to use the power of the the ancients uh, rather than stand and bang. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Nora? Um, I am playing Skeptocles the Unconvinced. Um, she is a green elf. <laughs> She's a green elf priestess shaman of Aldria, which is the goddess of the woods. And so she is like friends to all of nature. Um, yeah, she just picture like green elf in like a nice flowy sundress and little garland on her head, maybe, and totally unbothered by everything. <laughs> and, sundress. And, and, as a sundress. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't imagine that in my first and this it's just oh, adds a lot like of long it. flowy roby garbs. Yeah. Oh yeah. I can't be I, just, con- I can't I can't be constricted by tight fitting clothing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My limbs need to run free and wild. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Just a reminder that uh, Gloranthan elves are like made of wood completely. So they're sort of similar to a to a dryad and there's all kinds of different ones. So, um, yeah, a, a, a wood cre- creature made of wood in a long, flowy summer dress. Am I, I'm made of wood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> you're, like, you're like a tree person, yeah. You're, Amazing. You're a That's right. why you have such a hot plant room. Like it, and, no uh, wonder you were so into that tree last yeah. time. Right? Yeah. I have like a type. Uh, <laughs> sexy Groot. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Joe O'Brien. Uh, I am playing Yanda of Clearwine, uh, a human warrior of uh, the Babister Gore clan. Uh, which is a cult, an, er, cult, uh, yeah, c- cult, cult sorry, yeah. <laughs> uh, Babister Gore cult who uh, w- worships Babister Gore, who is uh, an, an, a god of the earth, sort of one of the uh, goddesses that, well, not one of, the goddess that is kind of, kind of the earth's enforcer in a way. So for those that commit crimes against nature, Babister Gore and her followers, who are all women, will hunt you down and kill you for your crimes. They are uh, extremely well trained and violent when they need to be, but when not, they go into a sort of uh, a, a state of calm and peace. Uh, they are not always warlike, but when the situation calls for it, they will rise to the occasion. Um, my character was. Uh, has been in several wars <laughs> and ended up uh, in indentured servitude and only last episode was freed from uh, this service by Vilma 
and uh, and obviously some help from Skeptocles as well to rid herself uh, of this employer who uh, this filthy filthy merchant that Brian you did an amazing job of playing. Yes. I'm glad he's dead because uh, I kind of remember that, did that it. dude. <laughs> <laughs> and so she is is yeah recently recently freed, and uh, I'm very excited about that. Yeah, well, so excited. Well, let's let's play. <laughs> some rune quest, some questing for runes. Uh, if you're if you're new to the show, don't worry, you'll 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 pick it up. It's super simple. It's not weird at all. Uh, totally conventional <laughs> game. Now, last episode, <laughs> last episode, you all found yourselves uh, through very unique and expertly crafted uh, storytelling mechanisms in the same town, the town of Pine. Pine spelt with a Y. And in the middle of the town of Pine is this beautiful big old tree. Uh, which Nora's character uh, skeptically is actually animated with uh, powerful rune magic last episode to make it like sort of come to life and try to start attacking some of these wayward lunar soldiers. The lunar soldiers, of course, being the uh, or the dregs of the the former illegal occupation of this land, <laughs> and uh, it came to light uh, that you know they have been uh, hassling. The, the very calm and scented people of the town of Pine. As you learned last episode, they, they came in and they demanded all of the apples from the tree of Pine, all of the Pine's apples to be mm-hmm. taken so that they could uh, take them to the Red Emperor. And they, 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 they rode into town uh, brandishing their swords. They had very, they, they had very like un kempt armor like that it was was very spotty and rusty they they didn't really look like they'd been um keeping up to date with their drills uh however none of you liked that so you put them all down pretty much like pretty aggressively Um, put them to the sword as we (laughs) did indeed now uh i think uh the ones that you didn't kill uh i think one got away from memory maybe one did maybe one didn't who knows but there's definitely one i think one ran Oh, but maybe he was hideously oh, yeah. killed by somebody. No, you're right. But there is one guy who's on the ground who was like, who, who was out of combat because uh, a broken leg was. or something. No, yeah. no, it was a, it was a like a full on compound fracture in the elbow. Like oh, the, that's like, right. Like the oh. bone went out that way. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's on <laughs> the ground right. being totally normal. Um, yeah. <laughs> and meanwhile, the uh, the mayor of the town, after seeing what you'd done, he was so scared, and he presented to you the, the bag of Pine's apples. And he said, if Mm. if, if you've done such wonderful things to, well, you know, contextually speaking, you've done such wonderful (laughs) things to to help the people of Pine. And he will give you the entire bag of Pine's apples should you end the, the, uh, the threat of the Red Emperor. Now, and that's a big deal because the Red Emperor was the leader of the entire nation of the Lunar Empire. So if he's back and he's just really keen on apparently getting the fruit from this tree, well, you know, it's something you can probably deal with. Um, in a, and also in might a be a significantly session. bigger deal. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And like, what do we know about these, about these apples? Yeah, is well, it cannibalism apples, if I eat it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it actually says in the uh, in the Glorantha uh, bestiary, which is the uh, both the the monster manual type book and also the player's guide to playing non-human characters. It actually says uh, in there in the section about playing elves that all elves are willing cannibals. Uh, <gasps> so you what? do. So you, they only eat plants. They they're not carnivores. <laughs> and made a point of saying it's like no, no, yeah. So you are technically all cannibals because wow. you only eat plants. It's a lot to unpack there. It is. (laughs) (laughs) Love that. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I'm I'm all of a sudden stoked about these apples. (laughs) (laughs) Delicious. Um, right, so so he, yes. he hasn't he hasn't given them to us. He is saying he'll no, he's give them to us them. if we. Uh, and this is the guy who was crying a lot. He was, oh, as yeah, he was picking okay. the apples, he was so scared. I can't remember what his voice does. So if you're going to be a jerk and point out in the comments, like Brian, oh, just a different voice for the guy to represent. Well, it's been a while. Okay, I don't I've got other things to do. All right, this is my full time job. Um, <laughs> I've got a job. <laughs> yeah, I've okay. got a job. This is my job. But you know what I mean. I half ass it. You know. Um, so he's. So this guy, the 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 mayor. The mayor, the mayor, uh, has <laughs> is sitting. He's got his bag of apples, and he's looking up. He's looking between each of you, with glaze, glazy, watery eyes, and he, and he says again, "I will give you the bag of pine's apples if you end 
The torment the Lunar Empire is putting to our small, peaceful town. What say you? I'm okay with that, because I kind of don't like those guys already. So, as far as I'm concerned, this is just free apples, then. You guys? <laughs> it would be my great pleasure to spill more lunar blood across these sands. Let I me put it this way. <laughs> A day will come when I will call upon their spirits to fight for me. We're gonna kill him. <laughs> <laughs> so in other words, we're gonna kill them. Uh, oh my God, I also don't remember how I sounded. <laughs> I don't More know. More embarrassing for My you, character is the honest. strong, silent type. She yeah. <laughs> she nods in a way that you know she's in. Um, well. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just, I was like, I wanted to double check and make sure what I suspected. 80 is my hatred for the Lunar Empire. If oh, you had to put yeah. a number on how much I hate the Lunar Empire, I hate it more than I like anything else. According mm. to my sheet, so <laughs> you hate them so much that if you'd just been a bystander, you'd be like, "Can I involve myself in this lunar hunt?" Y yes, for people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Also, I think that she's a bit distracted at the moment by the recent death of uh, <clears throat> this merchant, uh, yes, this oppressive who, merchant, yes, and so who, she, you know, goes over to his corpse and kneels down next to it. And she pulls open his vest a little bit, and inside, uh, inside, she reaches into a pocket and draws out this small flute, this little instrument that was an heirloom of her family that this dude <gasps> oh, took close. and held on his person uh, for a really long time. And she hated that. And she just takes it back, stands up over him, and just. Bleh spits on the body it, it and, does not smell uh, good yeah. yeah uh can i i'm gonna vilma's gonna go over next to yonda i'm gonna lean down i'm gonna uh cut off the ear of this guy uh, yonda trophy. nods appreciatively and uh i don't know like have a little string. I do this often, so I got string handy to like just yeah. poke on through and like make a little necklace. And I hand it to Yonda. I say, "So you never forget what happened here, and never get into the shackles of another again." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> says skeptically. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yonda, Yonda takes it uh, with proper reverence um, and is is looking to you, is looking to Vilma, to you know, for what she wants to do about this lunar emperor. She's going to go where you go right now because holy shit, <laughs> this um, rune priest is a badass. Yonda of Clearwine. Yes. Were you at the Battle of Panel Ford? I was. I nearly died. I remember hearing of your great strength. I look forward to seeing you battle many more ahead of you. Yes, let us take this fight. To let us kill himself. senselessly! Let, let us kill and leave a blood in our wake! Yes! Rex Mannheim creepily sidles up to you, Joe, and like puts puts his hand on your shoulder. Huh! <laughs> what are you doing? Do you know that receiving the ear of a deceased is considered a great honor to Dakafal? Now you can hear this world and the next. And then just walks away before he responds. <laughs> <laughs> she looks down at the ear quizzically. And just for a moment, puts the ear to her ear. It's like holding up a seashell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. And then she sets it down. Okay. Are we when can we fight to... something? Let's go. 
<laughs> I'm well, so we, psyched. <laughs> what are we going to do about him, though? Can we just like maybe stick him on the ground real quick? Because I'm telling you, like a year from now, uh, the plant's going to be bodies. really happy. Burn them, yes. Oh, okay. We could do that. Oh, too. we've you, we can feed the plant with their bodies. Is yeah, that what you're saying? The tree will be happy. All right, but first let Craig feed. And then I give the rest <laughs> to your tree. That's fair. That's fair. And Wait, Craig, Craig is... eats corpses. Yeah. Yeah, Craig eats corpses. <laughs> <laughs> was Craig the death flamingo? Yeah, he's yes. a flamingo. <laughs> <laughs> that I ride. Yeah. A white flamingo. I, I, it's a bigger than normal flamingo. Yeah, just yeah, from yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's like a like a cassowary sized it's flamingo. A large lad. Yeah. Like emu sized. Let me go. All right, so there's the, the mayor who is weeping at the base of the pine's apple tree uh, with his bag of pine's apples. There's also the lunar soldier who is uh, fluttering in and out of consciousness because his arm has got bone spurt poking out the opposite way oh, of his elbow. Oh, yes, that's right. On the him. ground. Uh, there's, so there's, there's a couple of ways if you'd like to try. Or you could just do it old school and just start wandering into the direction you saw the horses of the lunar empire or the lunar soldiers come from. <clears throat> and try and track to where to where the, uh, the, the they may be coming from. Good question. Wow, that was a good sentence. Yeah. Question the guy. Yes. Yeah. Get get him to speak. Um. Anybody good at that? Communication. Um, hmm. Communication skills. Intimidation hmm. or charm or fast talk. Uh, I have a half decent intimidate. I put a little bit into that for Yonda. Uh, she nice. has an intimidating presence. She's a warrior. She's mm-hmm. you know, and she's got a whip, which I just feel like is more even more intimidating than a sword. Because if you just so we, whack that yeah. thing like right next to his ear, <laughs> man. Exactly. And, uh, is so. there a is there a, a mechanic I forget for like assisting each other in this? Uh, not not really. You can you can sort of uh, both attempt the same thing. Mm, so I okay. think it's like you know you can um, uh, you can attempt a similar role to give uh, someone a bonus if that uh, makes sense. Okay. So you could be like right, so right, for right. instance, if you're going for intimidation, you'd be like I'm going to stand nearby mm-hmm. and also be intimidating. If you pass your role, it won't succeed the task, but you will give the other person a bonus. Right, uh, right. <clears throat> the other thing is that we co- talked, of course, about one of the core mechanics being augmenting, which is using one right. skill to give yourself another bonus. So, for instance, uh, we, d- we did that with uh, runes and passions last, uh, yes. last game. But we can also do that with skills. For, so, for instance, if... Um, if Yanda wanted to, you know, brandish her whip while she was being intimidating, she could roll against her whip skill to try and augment her intimidation. Uh, mm. Or she could do so with her uh, hatred of uh, Lunas to try and augment her intimidation as well, if you would like, uh, Yanda. Or you can just, you can just, uh, just, you know, go for it with uh, whatever your base intimidate skill is. Um, what if I sang it, like a really just like for background <laughs> music, just really to amp up that intimidation? <laughs> and I could yeah. dance. I have a 15 yeah. in dance. I've taken a couple of lessons. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's okay. Cool. It's nothing flashy, right. but it's yeah. disorienting. I don't so have a, the... a role to add, but I'll just lick the blood off my mace in the back. That's pretty hardcore. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, let's. Um... <laughs> All right. Nora, make a uh, a a sing roll. Okay. Uh, sorry. Skeptic, please make a sing roll. Rex Mannheim, please make a dance roll. I don't know why it's uh, a dance. I have a pretty good Vilma, sing. Vilma, <laughs> make make a uh, Vilma make an intimidate roll. You should have a base intimidate check. Okay. And then oh. based on those responses. I rolled a forty under forty six. Okay, that's uh, that's still oh, that's 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 good. You just got in. So you're singing. Is it like an upsetting song, or is it just like, is it like changes? It's one of those like weird, um, not like a Gregorian chant because it's just me and you (laughs) kind of need more people. Yeah. Yeah. So it's something like in dissonant tones to where it just kind of makes everything that uh, that Yonda's saying like just really just hit you to the core, just makes your arm hair stand up on it. Yes. 
Rex Meinheim, how's your uh, dance going? At first I was bummed because I rolled a 20, but I forgot I have a, t- uh, a plus 10 modifier for communication, which is a 20 under 25. So I actually oh, succeed. Well so yeah, you start nice. dancing to so the weird this haunting Gregorian dance noise. in the background. <laughs> yeah, and, and as you dance to this us. guy, you, you're doing it in such a, such a way that this guy gets constant flashes of his own face reflecting in your face. Yes. It's very it's upsetting. Seductive. Yeah, well, well, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, that's that too. Yeah. <laughs> that's all he knows. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Vilma, how did your uh, intimidate check skill? Yeah, it role turns go? out licking a mace is not very easy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, I got a ninety-seven on my. Roll. Oh wow! Against what? Fifteen. Fifteen. Well, that's actually a fumble. Now, if this yeah. were uh, this were in, let's roll a d one hundred. If this were a fumble in combat, just in case we never get one, I'll just because there's a very long chart of what that could mean in combat. So oh. roll a d one hundred and tell me what you get. 80. An 80? Ugh. An 80 would have been... Um, uh, your weapon would have got knocked away if you are attacking, or if you were parrying, your shield or weapon was knocked away. That's that's, that's actually one of the... It's the lower... You rolled pretty high, so that's not too bad. Maybe no, I can the, just, like... I'd probably just, cut like, your tongue cut my tongue mace. up. Yeah. 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 It's oh, all what th- did I do that for? It's really <laughs> sore. <laughs> all right. But, Yanda, because, uh, because both Skepticles and Rex uh, passed their assistance... You get a cumulative 10% bonus to your Intimidate roll, in addition to any augment you would like to do, if you would like to do one. Yeah, let's just use it now. I'd like to augment um, with my hatred for the Lunar Empire. Okay, which is an 80, correct? Correct. And I- All right. So, I felt like if you used it, you had to check it off. Is that a thing? You did. So, you can essentially use the same... You can use the same uh, passion rune or skill to augment a skill... Uh, or, or augment a roll, rather, only once per session. Um, if you succeed at the roll, there are little check boxes, but that's because after we've finished our story, we check to see if any of those skills, uh, runes, or passions that you've used increase. Okay. That's how the experience system works. So... Okay, if great. You do, so, if you do, if you, yeah. So if you I, do, I just if you, didn't yeah. see any checkboxes on it, and I felt like I used it last time when I cast my <laughs> spell against them, but... That's maybe, okay, because it's a new session anyway, so yeah. it's okay, yeah. Okay, great. Um, here we go. I'm I going to... For yeah, first I'll do that H, attempt the 80 roll, my hatred hatred for the Lunar Empire, 72, okay. under All 80. Right, so that is a pass, uh, so you get... Ooh. Uh, just a regular pass, so uh, plus twenty percent. So that's going to be plus forty overall. So what does that make your intimidate now? Uh, plus forty overall. That makes it an eighty with a minus five modifier. So it's seventy-five. Okay, here comes a big seventy-six. So here we go, <laughs> seventy-five. She whips uh, the the whip right out into the air, cracks the air next to his ear, says, mm-hmm. "Tell us everything," and gets a fifth. Ooh, wow, nice. Okay. 15. You were, you were shooting for a 75. Is that uh, so special? It is, a, it is a special success at yes. that point. Yes. So nice. this guy, this guy like who was in there like in his eyes fluttering and glazing because, you know, his arm is poked out the other way. The whip like, <laughs> and then he looks up and he's singing and he can see the judge of the dead dancing nearby. He's like, oh my God. Oh God. Oh, I thought I was supposed to be going into shock. I'm not going into shock. It, it hurts. Oh God, please. Uh, what? What do you want to know? I'll tell you everything. I'll sing like a bird. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you set out from? Where is your... Uh... Uh, hideout. Our hideout is in the Gajay foothills, not that far from here. But you must be careful. You must fear Red Eye the Boar. And come closer. Come closer, he gestures with his one good hand. And she'll lean in, not intimidated by this one armed yeah, fool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you come closer, he's, he, he spasms, and some of the arterial spray from his arm um, like, hits you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Savage. <laughs> That's not why I asked you to come closer, but that just happens. <laughs> <laughs> Got her. Yes. Right in the eye with you my, must my artery be blood. The Red Emperor is. 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 Uh, he dies. What? The Red Emperor is what? No. No! No! And she starts like pushing at him, and he's dead, mm. dead. Yeah, he's, Man, he's dead. Man, he said dead. he was going to sing like a bird. He barely got a word out. <laughs> he barely finished a tune. Perhaps. Perhaps he's a celiac. 
<laughs> I'll never know what he was going to say. <laughs> there is something here that he said. What did he say? Red what? Red, not emperor, something else. The boar. Red boar. Red, red boar. boar, what is this? Do we, can we roll like a knowledge to know if we've ever heard of the red boar? Uh, you can, if anyone's got a, uh, a uh, local law, I think it's knowledge, law, local. This should be like a local skill. It's under your knowledge skills. I think if you have it. Uh, or, is, if it's related to farming. Have homeland lore? Is this homeland my homeland lore? That's the word. I mean, I'm in for, clear so. wine. Right? Yeah, you're in the. Yeah. You're in the. Yeah, you're all. Yes, yeah, so you've got homeland lore. Dude, I that. got this. <laughs> okay. Uh, and you know what? I I'm gonna. Um, no. Nope. Anyone can attempt this. Cause you should all have a level of homeland lore. Uh, thirty. Yeah. Yeah. Depending on the, yeah, depending on the degree of success you get, you'll get. Um, if you attempt, oh, if you attempt to use a passion rune to augment a roll, and you fail at the augment attempt, Bad. you still can't use it again that session. You, you still can't use it. What well, usually means it usually tells you you have to like meditate on that thought. If you use it for a passion, if you use, if you fail a passion, that passion could actually go down as you <gasps> like have a crisis of character. You're like, wow, how much do I hate them? Really, we're all just people, and um, <laughs> we're all just people. <laughs> Uh, or a rune like like what happened with uh, Vilma in the first the first episode, uh, they would have to meditate on that rune, and you couldn't use the rune at all until you've had a chance to meditate on it for a full day. I love it. That's so, great. There's like there's some real risk consequences yeah. to failure. That's only that's for that's only for augmenting with runes and passions. You can augment with a skill if you can describe like like how um, uh, you know like singing or dancing while you try to do something, for example. Gotcha. You know, or if you, or if you would try to augment your intimidate check with your whip skill, for instance. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, I'm just gonna roll the straight roll here for uh, homeland lore, uh, which I have thirty. So this is not great, not great. Fifty three over thirty. Okay, you haven't heard of Red Eye the Boar. Did anyone else make a homeland lore? Roll? I failed. I, I got failed. a sixty two <laughs> over thirty. Sure. Yeah. Here. Why not? Forty two. Nope. These dice. Eighty six. <laughs> Oh, put them in the microwave. Six. I should. I should go get another set. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, so no, you've not heard of Red Eye the Boar. You're sure it's nothing. The 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 the, the last words of a rambling maniac. He loves things that are red. Red empires, red right. lunars, and perhaps he misspoke or something he saw in his dreams. It's, I've never heard of this. I live here my whole life. But I know where these foothills are. If we get there, we could probably find out more information about the Red Emperor's plan. Okay. Exactly, and we don't cool. know how many there are, so let's that was gonna proceed be my with question. caution. Yes, we will go, but we will uh, investigate. We'll it does not distance. matter how many there are; we will kill them all. Yes, oh, yeah, yes, rune, rune priest. Yes, rune Wait, priest. So, is there anything you, anyone would like to? Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Do you all have mounts? We cannot all fit on Craig. No, I was not permitted <laughs> to have a horse, but I wait, wait. Yes, I have one now. Can I ride? And she this? takes the merchant's oh. horse. <laughs> oh, she yeah. take the merchant's cart. Yeah. yeah. Can we just take the whole cart? Yeah, she'll Takes take the, the whole cart. cart. Why the, not? The cart is full of bread hunks. So yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Dub them onto okay. the ground. Yeah, what was oh, the uh, obscene <laughs> brothers merchant guild or something? Was it the? Uh, we'll burn them all with the merchant's yeah. body. Yeah. We'll burn all the bread. <laughs> yeah, ritualistic the bread. The cart yeah. sounds like an amazing idea, and I'm going to go with that. But just out of my own curiosity, if I <laughs> if that tree was animated because I animated oh. it, would I have been able to uh, theoretically? You, you could you could for 15 minutes, which is how long the spell lasts. Uh, okay, so you, gotcha, you'd, gotcha. you'd flash forward to like you like you got like half a mile out of town and then the tree would just root <laughs> itself again and everyone would be like, that's our economy. Like it's so far away. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I think cool. the cart's a great idea. Cool. And we have snacks back there. You do, you have so much bread. Yeah, and the yeah. other person that was serving with me, yeah. he split. He like oh, ran he, off. He, he immediately, as soon as he was like, it's my chance, I'm going to run immediately. Yeah, like, exactly, because so, yeah. I was going to be like, hey, let, let's help each other out. He just took <laughs> he just, off. He's so, still running. Yeah, yeah. How do you? How does one recover magic points? Uh, one, uh, one every hour. So by the time we get to the next encounter, you'll have full magic points again. Uh, if, if, however, if anyone spent any rune points, you will have you to have wait to until the next high meditate, holy day of your right? cult. Yeah, yeah. Well, 
I have a sanctify spell, which allows me to make like a sanctify. Right, I'm just interpreting this sanctified yeah. ground that serves like a temple that you can meditate in, right? Correct. Yeah, you can you can use that. I think that is a rune spell itself. But yeah, you can it basically is. bless some ground, which then becomes holy ground that anyone can sort of meditate on and recover rune points. Nice. Um, oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So, how does the calendar look? In general, uh, in terms of high, high <laughs> holy days, like believe, how many are there? Is there like one a month? Or? Season? Yeah, there's well, there's usually one or two a month, depending on, on okay. when it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. But you, usually, is because when, when you're playing a um, a full campaign, uh, because there's five seasons, and uh, the the, general, the rule of thumb is well, what the, what the game suggests is that each story is takes place during one season. So by the time you start mm. the next story in your campaign, it's like okay, this previous season has passed. Let's check the calendar. Uh, who's paid? You can, and that's also when you do things like because all the cults have requirements, so you have to pay gold and stuff to them. Uh, or do certain things, and uh, you, you sort of in your downtime section. That's that's when you, you do that between between sessions. Mm. I don't know if anyone actually spent any rune points. I know um, Skeptocles did to I think animate the war tree. I think it was a one point spell, but you should yes. still have two or three left. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I, I used didn't. some spirit magic, no rune magic. That's okay. That. So Same. everyone's magic points should be back to full. Did anyone take any hit points of damage? I don't no. think so. I feel like Maybe. I got hit. No one once. took a hit. But I don't see anything on my sheet to indicate that. You might have just parried it or dodged it. That's okay. It, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess I was attacked once, but I yeah. I parried it. Yeah. Do you want me to take like a point of damage to my shield? Uh, no, that's okay. But uh, okay. that is as kind as I will be. It is now brutal. Dice All right. Now, once we leave, may. once we leave yeah. this town and set off into the wild, we are truly yeah. done yeah. and done. All right. <laughs> so. You'll uh, get in the cart. Uh, Yanda, you're driving the cart, I'm assuming, or are you riding the horse that's leading the cart? Yeah, I'll say she drives the cart because she knows the horse. horse sure, sure, sure. And, yeah. <laughs> Just... Uh, and then uh, Rex Manheim. Are yes. you you in the cart? Are you walking down by the side? Are you hanging off a horse? Are you? <laughs> Part of me wants to walk alongside the cart because he's a weirdo, but uh, <laughs> I'll sit. I'll sit in the back. Just put your rollerblades on and hold on to the right. cart. And it can drag you along. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hold on to the back like Marty McFly. Exactly. Uh, no, I'll sit back there and uh, sits very erectly. Okay. Yeah. Just well looking done. in the distance. Uh, Vilma is riding Craig. The, yeah. Uh, uh, I'll uh I'll ride Craig like you know alongside are you wait uh yonder are you sitting like outside the cart like at the front on mm-hmm. the horse or yeah yeah uh, yeah I'll I'll ride alongside and uh maybe you hear hear her muttering uh sort of to say Gagarth I have brought you a new pack they will fight well and wander the wilds together. Very nice. serious, very hard. Sweet cool. prayer. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. And uh, skeptically, are you uh, riding on the back of the cart on someone's horse uh, on yeah, is Rex the- Mannheim's shoulders? What's the... <laughs> <laughs> is, is the cart, uh, it's just like an open situ- cart situation? Or like uh, what's... Sure, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like a, it's a cart that you, know, you, you can sort of pack it up and seal it, so... It keeps all the bread safe, but you can also Uh, have it open. Yeah. If there's like a little open area, I want to just keep watch for uh, any potential enemies and I'm just going to have my elbow ready. Yeah, that's cool. Cool. (sighs) Tell me if this is crazy, Brian, but uh, (laughs) I have this this spell I took purposely because it sounded really cool. And considering we do have some time here, if we had an hour while we're traveling, if I were to enter a deep meditative state, could I discorporate? And would that be at all helpful for the journey Disco- ahead? Discorporate? I'll have to, uh, what's that <laughs> it's, it's an hour long ritual where I- Oh, is it? Where is I like- Discorporation. Yeah, discorporation where I enter the spirit realm. Um, and so like, since we're traveling along there, if I meditated, as long as I'm not traveling more than five kilometers away from my body, uh, <laughs> I would be, I would be, uh, 
and I'm looking into this, you become this thing called a fe- the fetch. But I don't know how, how deep we want to get into this, <laughs> or if it would even be helpful. So, Troy, I, I see uh, for our second ever game, you've selected the longest spell text of any spell in the Red Book of Magic. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of them is, along like that, and a lot of them is, take an hour to cast. Spell. Yeah, they do take, they take an hour It takes to an cast. hour to read it. <laughs> now the, the thing is so you, yeah. you can do that in the hour but the issue is because it's still only a one point rune spell and it's temporal that means it's only going to last for 15 minutes if there's right. something in particular you would like to do for instance you could cross into the spirit realm and ask spirits questions about what's been going on nearby the red, red eye do the that. boar yeah like uh, what have you seen like people that recently died or something yeah oh. uh, so you can actually just pass your, you can just like sit in the you can meditate in the back of the the back of the cart and then just essentially astrally project yourself while they take your body and, and uh and do that yeah are all yeah, temporal sure. spells 15 minutes uh rune temporal spells are 15 minutes um uh if it's a spirit magic spell which is the much more common magic uh, and less powerful if they're temporal they I think they last for two minutes which is usually enough for a combat okay is, is the idea there yeah and this one uh, isn't so guaranteed yes. i still have to roll a uh I think I have to roll a medicine check to see if I can even pull it off. Okay, yeah, so you'll have to... Yeah, so first of all, it's... Um, because it's a common rune spell, that's why it just has the the R symbol, the one rune that's next to it, you can choose any rune you like to attempt to cast it. I suggest you choose your highest one. That would be the moon. Okay, so uh, please, uh, if, you, if you'd like to discorporate yourself while you're sitting in the back of this cart, make a... Uh, so what I ro- roll against your moon if you would like roll. you can you you can augment it if you would like by say singing or meditating or chanting I mean I'm on fire with these rolls so oh, really? rolling against the m- moon I rolled a two under 70 <laughs> oh really yeah oh oh okay well then that's a <laughs> critical success so you cast the spell without actually expending one of your precious precious rune points oh, oh my Ooh. god wow. that's a huge However, you still might fail because now you have to make a meditate roll. <laughs> right. After you've, uh, you've, you've drawn up. And uh, by the way, as you, this means everyone's chilling out. We're, we're going yeah. on the cart. Rex Manheim's in the back chanting. And because he's doing rune magic, he's like glowing with like death energies. It's very obvious that he's doing something pretty hardcore. His rune tattoos are glowing and buzzing. So cool. uh, all right. So now do I get a bonus to my meditate skill from using the moon affinity? Uh, you... You, what is your meditate skill? Uh, it's 55, but my modifier is five, so it's a 60 total. Okay, you can you can augment the meditate skill I mean. if you would like. Yeah, it depends if, what would you like to augment it with? Uh, with with the moon. With the moon, yes, you can do that. So ro- roll moon again though, to, for the augment. That's a separate roll. Ah, uh, to hell yeah, with it. I'm just gonna roll yeah, yeah. straight meditate. Okay. All right. Uh, and fail, 72 okay. over 55. <laughs> okay, that's, that's, that's a bummer. Oh my um, gosh. So you you go into spirit form for a little bit, um, but you can't, maybe it's the movement of the cart. Maybe it's the, you know, fact that nobody was singing a Gregorian chant nearby to help you out, (laughs) Uh, but you were unable to properly cross into the spirit realm. So it was lucky that you rolled uh, so well in your rune, your rune uh, check because you didn't actually use any rune points. Um, So you flutter and you wake back up. (sighs) This doesn't bode well. I tried to pierce the veil to walk amongst the dead and ask questions of them. But this rumbly cart disturbed me. I will now go to sleep. Okay. (laughs) You pass Um, out. Could I? I just realized I had this. Um, Could I do a detect enemies? Uh, you you can. That's that's like a aura spell. I'm pretty sure. I think we have it have it nearby. You can totally do that. Instant. Yes. So it gives Does it say the range on that? Direction and distance. It just says ranged, so I'm not sure how. Okay, that's okay. Hold that range. thought for a second because you're coming to the foothills now, and oh, as okay. you're on the borders of like the a forest. Now I'll make, have everybody make a scan roll as you come towards the forest near these foothills. Uh, okay. Scan, which is this like the scan perception? Yeah, scan. under perception. Ha, dude! Oh, no. I did not take points. Fifteen. Wow. Womp womp. Under so I'm take 35. Um, 48 under 56. Okay, that's still nice. success. I finally. 
fail of well, and Rex, well, well, Rex is asleep in the back of the cart, so yeah, probably makes sense. So, if yeah, I was yeah. awake, I would have seen it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, Yanda uh, and uh, and Vilma. You it see, makes sense because uh, we're the yeah. two in the front. Riding of the group. at the front, yeah. yeah. As you're approaching, uh, there's like, you know, this big line of trees, the tree line of the forest. You actually see a, uh, a uh, at an angle, an old, like, you know, not properly fastened, but a, a, a flag, which has been dug into the earth and is sloping at an angle. And it's got a, there is a, there is a red, a, a sheet of red fabric, which is tattered which is flapping gently in the breeze um, nearby one of the uh, clearly like somewhat worn pathways into this forest. It is them. Is that, is that, is that yeah, a sign, a known it. sign of the Lunar Empire? Like the well, they, red, they love red. red. Yeah, they love red. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, they have claimed this place for their own, it seems. We probably should turn back. <laughs> she smiles. Yonda, you <laughs> joke with me. <laughs> Should we proceed on foot? Mm. Yes. Oh, you're awake. <laughs> yes. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't even hear the question. I was still talking to a, a dream. You're what are we doing? Like a spirit yourself. The Lunar Empire, they have marked their territory already. Mm. The territory they are destined to lose. I don't like the fact that they're trying to claim land. Like who, like that's not really a thing if you really think about it. So this like angers me even more. <laughs> Many years will be claimed this day. Uh, Many years, I... yes. Let us go. All right, so you make your way uh, into this uh, somewhat worn path. You can see that it's been recently tread by, uh, by horse hooves. And whatnot, but it is sort of a narrow, sort of single, single file type path into the somewhat dense wood. Now, uh, skeptically, as you said, you would like to detect enemies. Yes. <laughs> uh, which is—is is that a spirit magic spell? I'm just trying to it see. It is that. a spirit magic spell. Okay, so to cast that, you need to roll uh, under your power times five, which is, I think is a a stat we'd all written down. So whatever your power characteristic is, multiplied by five. Okay. Um, because that's such a common role too, we generally just multiply it once and write it down somewhere. Ah, uh, except uh, I did not. I did don't you, think I your, did. What's, what's your power? Don't make me do mathematics. Fifteen. Oh, that's gonna be that's gonna be good. Oh yeah. So you said uh, times so you, five. Yeah, oh, so, so, so under seventy-five. 75? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Twenty-three. Wow. Nice. Okay. Well done. So yeah. So you you. You know, you you, yeah, you get on your magical. <laughs> oh, that's the, the noise it makes. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. We'll say that's Detect the sound it makes, loading. Yes. For yeah. skeptically, <laughs> I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> um, there is an enemy. I don't want to alarm anybody, especially not skeptically. <laughs> Too late. But they're, 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 you can tell there is an enemy. Uh, about about you've been you you've been tracking through the this along this wood this 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 wood lane path into this dense forest in the foothills for about 10 minutes. And you've been sitting there with, you know, with your, the noise, the, the, mm -hmm. the, the detect, detect enemies on. And all of a sudden you get the sense of something that means you harm off about, oh God, you're gonna make me switch to your uh, system. What's 10 <laughs> meters? Like I'm 30 feet, feet, seven feet. I don't know, how long is it? Yeah, 30 uh, feet, yeah, 10 meters. 30 feet, about, about, about. 30, about 30 feet uh, off, off, the, uh, off the path behind a ridge. Uh, under like behind a boulder, like you know, where the where the drop where the the path drops down, and someone could hide behind this ridge. You get the sense that there is an enemy there. Now, of course, you don't know what the enemy is. You just know that it is something that could intend you harm. What would you like to do? Um, hey guys, my audacity <laughs> meter is going off and just telling me there is a this bitch over here in this direction <laughs> is lurking. Um, <laughs> this bitch means this us bitch. harm. <laughs> this bitch <laughs> means us harm. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like it. Um, my, I mean, my elf bow could possibly would would. It's a ranged weapon, yeah. That could. It is, but uh, you can't see anything but I can't from where you see are. See anything? Yeah, but it's, it's, I have it's, it's, it at the ready, yeah. and I just you know just be on the lookout because somebody means to do us harm in that direction over there. 
I specifically feel like 30 feet specifically over there. like right there <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, I can see I feel the rage flowing through you skeptically's I uh, I am rage should, felt <laughs> I can tell we should all approach as is appropriate however you feel we may uh, subdue them best I do not hide in the shadows I walk proudly with my weapons out but I do not expect the same of you all. Oh, like, do you just want to go charge? Because I'm okay with that. Yes, let us go. And she gets down off the horse or off the front mm-hmm. of the cart, whatever. And uh, she's going to tie off the horse to a, a tree uh, and get out her shield off of her back and pull out this whip and say, we do as the rune priest says. We walk weapons out. And we make our purpose known. Hold. How many? Did you say it's less than fifty meters away? <laughs> Thirty. <laughs> said it's ten meters it, away. It's one hundred and forty chicken it, soup cans away. <laughs> yeah. I'll make up my That's own. Something everyone yeah. can understand. Yes. Something yeah. everyone yeah. can understand. Something we can yeah. all internationally yeah. yeah. around. Yeah. Chicken soup. One hundred forty-four chicken soup cans. <laughs> um, <laughs> hold on. Let me detect the power of a foe. And I'll use second sight just to get a sense of the uh, the relative power of uh, oh. this living being, as well as non-living beings. But I'm I have a me- range of fifty meters. Range of yeah, there is a range of fifty meters. Okay, is that a spirit spell or a rune spell? It is a spirit spell. Okay, so make roll your power times five, which is the number you've written down. I shall. I shall. All right, power times five. Oh, eleven. Uh, under uh, under fifteen times five, you know seventy five. Seventy five. Yeah, yeah. So that is a another special success. So you can hold on to those spirit those those, those magic points. There you go. Oh my Amazing. gosh! The wizard himself. Uh, yeah. So you get you get a sense. You what, what was the name of the spell you're doing? Sorry. Second sight. Second sight. So you get the sense of some sort of uh, underground horror loitering on the surface about 140 soup cans away <laughs> some sort of some sort of eyeless asymmetrical creature with the hunger sense that directs it to its prey by the eyes of Dagafal there is some dark subterranean being ahead these are not mere clods that we faced back at the merchant's cart this is pure evil. Good luck, friends. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're not going, are you? And he slowly walks away, <laughs> back to town. Uh, he just he has to stand back, because he's so weak. Then perhaps we fight evil with our own evils. And I would take the pouch of sand that is at my, hanging at my waist, Mm-hmm. And I'd love to, like, um, okay, bear with me because I don't really yeah. know how to do this. You gotta try um, and summon your Wervlish? Yeah, I want, I want my Wervlish. I'd like to command it. Okay, like to so like you, unleash it out of first, here. And, so you got the, uh, you got it. You, you can summon it first. I think we've already created oh, it. You've yes, definitely already and, and created it. And it stays in this pouch. Is oh, what okay. I, Oh, then right, you read right, somewhere. You, you cast, and you're going to cast the command word. Command spell. Yes. Okay, okay. And what? Uh, that's a rune magic. It's a rune. Spell, yeah, it's rune magic. Yeah. Does it use a particular rune? Um, be in your, um, oh. be in your Gargath section, I'm pretty sure. In the uh, well, it just tells me what the create Wolvish one is, but not the command because. Uh, what did we Gag- say? Gargath is a. Uh, he's, he is a. Uh, Create Wervlish is specifically uh, the death rune. Death. Yeah, so should yeah, we just use is, the same as the create? Uh, sorry, create. Yeah, sorry. Exactly. So use... A, oh, uh, actually, you're right. It's com- You're commanding a cult spirit, which is a universal rune spell, so you can use any rune. Um, oh, okay. So you can just use your highest one, I would suggest. Yeah, yeah. So highest is gonna be... Well, actually, it could be death or, you know, let's go with the disorder. Okay, that's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, so would you like to augment it by singing or uh, dancing or anything um, at all? 
Mm. It's completely optional. Can I somehow use my, like, battle knowledge to augment this? Because I'm trying to get it to go fight. Uh, sure, yeah. So make a, make a battle roll. Okay. So cool. All right, I got a 40 under 75. Okay, so that's plus 20% to your... Uh, disorder. Your disorder, which will make it what? Okay, which will make it 95. Okay. Here we go. I just rolled a one. Oh, I just rolled a one. Oh, so you critical, the shit out of that thing. <laughs> critical success. So you don't spend your rune point, which oh is my gosh. a big deal. Nice. Uh, because the- it costs two. So the sand if, from from each uh, well that is big uh, from each grain of sand uh, stems like this uh, and 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 by the way Rex Mannheim you, you're probably not stoked on this oh because the sense that you get is that this is a spirit of uh, the dead that has been uh, unable to cross over to to the underworld and has instead been trapped in these many many grains of sand mm-hmm. and this spirit claws its way out of of the sand uh Ooh. vilma did you have an idea of what this thing might look like or do you want me to right, fill in I the blanks there says, otherwise up to you i was gonna read about it like tell you all a little it says yeah they're the souls of people caught by the wild hunt that's us while lost on the chaparral <laughs> that's us <laughs> they have the form <laughs> of human-sized dust storms and have been blowing on the winds for centuries mindless and whipped into an enraged passion and frenzy until the very stuff of their souls is worn away into the grit of the sands. Um, so maybe, so it'd probably be the shape of whoever I killed very slowly over the course of a night to do this ritual. Yeah. Yeah, let's say it's um, a large warrior as well, almost in like priest-like silhouette like i killed some other priest to do this it's pretty hardcore yeah what is this 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 foul magic you have called the soul of one who is yet to be judged it will be free when it has finished its fight just like us all and you've got the uh, <laughs> stats for your wervlish there on page yeah. 94. Yeah. Okay, cool. So you can use that. All right. So we're about to enter combat. Does anybody want to cast any spells before combat begins? Was 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 Rex Mannheim injured? Did you take injury? No. No. no? He okay. cannot sustain a, su- a single injury. He will perish. <laughs> <laughs> he is wearing... You really keep driving this home, but like... <laughs> he's wearing no armor. He has a simple cap on. Okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I... Do I need to cast Spirit Guardian to have a Spirit Guardian, or can I just uh, sense them and use them in Spirit Combat? I can't remember if I cast Spirit You can't. You, uh, you don't need to, to cast that, I don't think. Yeah, you should. if you're using Spirit Combat, uh, you can usually just roll your, your Spirit Combat. Yeah, that's um, what I thought. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what um, bonus it gives me to ca- pre-cast that. Yeah. Also, it's really great I, I passed that rune spell because if I hadn't, it would have just released and probably fucked us Oh, yeah, up. you would be fighting that instead now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> We're fine. Uh, Yonda will cast a spell before closing in on this thing, hearing what uh, Rex is saying about this being some sort of subterranean horror and not just some cultist of the Lunar Empire. He, She is... Yeah, she's concerned. So I'd like to try to bust out a little rune magic. Yeah. And mm-hmm. She wants to imbue uh, the magic of the rune into her whip. At, okay. And so I'm going to cast Slash, oh. which is a very standard spell for axes, uh, but this is Argorantha, right? Yeah. Yes. Can I use so, it for a whip, Brian? Yes, yeah, so I, I believe yes. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> in Algorantha, the cult of a beast of gore uses whips instead of axes, and all the rune spells that refer to axes actually mean whips. So that is the choice Bam. you've made. So yes, that is slash or it's a crack or whatever. We'll we'll change the title to. But I think when you cast crack, that, so you, I like that you, crack. Yeah, so you have to make a uh, ro- now. What's the uh, the rune symbol for that? So, I think is uh, the rune symbol. Uh, if you're looking for the red magic is death. Mm-hmm. It looks like I, I see uh, I see a 
I see the rune for death in the book, yeah. in the so red you, book you of you magic. You have to make a death, death, uh, you roll against your death rune to cast it in. Really? Okay. You don't roll against power times five? No, that's for spirit magic. For rune Come magic, on. you're literally pulling on the runes. Come yeah. on, Joe. <laughs> oh, this opens up a whole world because, like, my pal stinks. So I, yeah. I thought Your I'd pal be pal stinks. Yeah, my pal stinks, dude. <laughs> yeah. So I thought that I'd be at a <laughs> real risk at casting rune magic. Uh, you no, know, no, that's expensive, and exactly. I could easily fail. Okay, this is great. All right, so death. <laughs> Watch, I'll fail this one. But uh, I've got, I'm good on the death rune. So let's, let's do it. Okay. She says this incantation, does this minor <laughs> ritual, and then tries to imbue the whip with slash 14 under yeah. 75. Nice. 14 under 75 is actually, it is a special success. Nice. So, so what hang do I get to your for room points. You hang on uh, to your room points. I don't have to spend a room point. Awesome. Exactly. That's pretty right, cool. Great. Awesome. So uh, what it does is it just increases the whip's damage by 1d6. So... Uh, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's yeah. cool. One day and does magical damage. All right. Yeah. Now, I think I need to. It's- I need to be uh, uh, honest here because I just looked at the command spell, and I think there is still a chance that I have not commanded this thing. Um, I think we just did the the roll for the rune. You know, I got. Oh the yeah, points. no, don't worry about the overcoming the power thing. Oh, that's that's that's, that's all right for now. Yeah, yeah, that's. Oh, that's, thank goodness. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> that'll, that'll be. Uh, um, yeah, we'll deal with that later. In our next work. series. <laughs> we'll deal with that later. <laughs> yeah, later. Got it. Yeah. Season two. <laughs> uh, right. I, I did have one question. Uh, yeah? If I was going to go into an arrow trance, yeah. how long would that last? Because, like, I'm still in the trance if the battle ends. If I had a dime. So, <laughs> like, time. how long am I just going to be, like, uh, the arrow spaced trance. out? Uh, that is okay. Let me see. So, what are the? Uh, does it say if it's temporal it or says is it temporal. instant? Okay. Uh, so I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, you, the spell will, will merge the caster's consciousness with their bow, entering a trance in which the only things that exist are bow and targets. Yep. <laughs> it doubles your <laughs> bow attack skill. That's pretty good, and you can use no other weapon, uh, and you can only move to get a clear shot or find another target. Uh, while entranced, you can only cast bow-related magic. It's not a berserker spell, so you can know when you're f- when the friends and enemies. So it, it lasts for a full fifteen minutes, but you, you're not in danger of just shooting your pals or yeah. anything. So that's but, okay. <laughs> but like, let's say this thing lasts way shorter than fifteen minutes. Am I still like? Yes, you are. You're still. <laughs> it's like the, the edible kicked in. You're just gonna try and wait for it to <laughs> to pass. Like you'll be okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, well, that sounds yeah. fun. Let's try that. <laughs> okay. So roll. Uh, you can roll either plant or, or I think it's moon on there. I suggest plant because you've got plant. I'm gonna. Quite high. Yeah, I got plant. So what do I have to do to start that? Just roll under just, plant. Just, just, just roll under plant. Yeah. Okay. My plant's seventy five, and I rolled seventy eight. Oh, oh no. That's a no. So you, you, so you, that sucks. What especially sucks about that is you still spend your rune point as well. Yeah, yeah. bummer. So, okay, okay, okay. But so maybe it's something about the the vibe in the woods, but you just can't properly <laughs> commune with uh, Aldria, the god, to borrow some of her magic to put your consciousness into your bow. Yeah, um, do there they must use be something really off in, in here? here. Yeah, I think mm. they do. Something's really unnatural. I don't like it. So that's a bummer. What a bummer. But, yeah. All right. So you, you you all come around the ridge and there on the bottom uh, beneath the ridge as you are approaching slowly, you see this uh, weird, it looks like the, uh, a very la- large bud of a flower, maybe something like that until uh, legs start to sprout out from it all around. And then the top of the top of the flower opens and it's got teeth and a big tongue and it's a crushed kid. Crushed kid, and it no. looks like it looks like this. Oh, yeah. it's like, oh, oh this crushed, oh, this crushed kid. Oh, oh, oh. That's yeah. cool. And it's, uh, it's fighting it now. Uh, what we do in RuneQuest for combat, we uh, ask everybody what they're uh, what they're doing, and based on that, we uh, they're going to go on a certain strike rank. Uh, this thing Oof. is going to um, try and fang somebody, which is strike rank seven. It's the evil, the evil thing. But uh, this is okay. like, it's is it a plant or is it not a plant? It's not a plant. It just okay. looked like it just maybe looks sort like, of like one. A, okay. it's some sort of subterranean horror. Oh, uh, got it. Okay, uh, Vilma, what would you like to do? And your Vil- Wervlish, what would they like to do? 
Oh yeah, I I commanded the I command the wolvish to hunt and point you know at in its direction and I send it like dusting over there, um, and I think I'm it's gonna got two you attacks. Know, what was that? It has two attacks, I believe. It has two. Oh right, I need a Jenny yeah. to pick. Let me see. This thing um, is nasty. To do to uh, just go do some what abrasion? <laughs> yeah, just just go abrade that thing. Go, yeah. go give it a good scrub. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and since I got those rune points back, I'm just like, let's just keep spending rune points. Hell yeah, dude! And as the whirlfish, maybe as it's like around me, it's like whipping up the wind around me as well, mm-hmm. and the air cool. swells, and I want to cast wind walking on. <gasps> On, on, on Craig? Craig. Okay. Uh, so that will that will happen at strike rank zero. So we'll come back. Oh, strike okay. rank one, rather. So we'll come back to that. Uh, okay. uh, Rex Manheim, what would you like to do? Uh, I'm going to uh, be commanding spirits to fight for me while I stand very far away from this thing. Okay, <laughs> dokily do. Is that my uh, uh, dex strike rank? Dex. It should be dex strike rank, which That's is... A three. Three for you. Uh, okay. Uh, Skepticles. Uh, I'm going to stay a healthy distance from this thing and uh, try to strike it with my elf bow. Okay. And what is your elf bow's strike rank? SR under your... Uh, is under it under the... the weapon? Under, under weapons? Weapon? Like the... Yeah. Mo- uh, it's, it's an 85. I got to hit under an 85. No, oh, no, no. There should oh. be an SR, like a separate stat. Uh, under there. If I not, tell me know. where your dex is. My dex... What's your dex? Is uh, a twelve? Oh, the deck strike rank, which will be underneath your character. Oh, deck strike rank is three. Three. Okay, let me just double check the elf bow okay. stat because uh, it'll give you your your modifier for it. Gotcha. Uh, give me one moment. Talk amongst yourselves. Oh, so all my questions are for you, role. Brad. <laughs> 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 um. This thing is nasty. I uh, I remember seeing this picture before. Really? It's, yeah. It's on the cover of the RuneQuest data set, actually. That's it's where it's from. That's very cool. That's where, yeah, okay. That makes sense. It's kind of like a Venus flytrap with legs. Yeah. It's, it's, it's horrifying. It's pretty gnarly. Okay, it, so yeah. strike rank is three, you said, Nura? Yes. Okay, we have my little dice. There it is. Uh, okay, and who haven't I asked? Yanda. Yanda, I think I'm just gonna try to, you know, warrior this shit, and so mm-hmm. close on it in within mm-hmm. striking distance and and attack with a whip. All right. So what's your um, size strike rank for the whip? Uh, size strike rank is two. Uh, yep. Deck strike rank is one. Okay. So you're gonna and you're gonna move. Sorry. Okay. Well, you're gonna go on two. It's pretty good. Okay. Let's let's go down our strike rank. So strike rank one. Um, Vilma. Can you please oh, yeah. uh, roll, okay, I think it's, I'm assuming it's the air rune for wind walking. Yes, it is the air rune. Let me also just pull up wind walking, right? Do, 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 do. Wait, it's right here. Wind walking. Fantastic. Commonly cast on riding animals. Um, yeah, I think I just have to do that roll. Yeah, okay, that's perfect. it. Perfect. Uh, my air is 70. I think I'm just gonna stick with... Just gonna just body it? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's try it. 28. There okay, you go. well done. All yeah, right, so it's... you your your air runes glow. You pull upon the, the, the core magic of Gagarth. And what happens to Craig when you do this? Would you like to describe it for everybody? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, Craig... You know, while Craig has, it was very clear Craig cannot fly uh, on his own. Um, but he has this moment where he's he's used to this, and he stretches out his wings nonetheless. And you see the scars of battle underneath for the amounts of enemies we've slayed together from the skies. And he just rises up above, and it's almost like his little legs like are walking upstairs. <laughs> As we just start like (laughs) moving up into the air above it. That's so cool. Yeah. It's great. Cool. All right. So, yeah, Craig is walking on air. Um, All right. Yanda, your strike rank two. Uh, Uh, Okay. Yanda moves up and mm -hmm. will attack with the whip. 
Okay, this thing is going to try and parry with its left middle leg. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, 40 under 80. Uh, this thing fails really bad. Uh, so you succeed at a 40 under 80, a regular success against a, a failed parry. So the attacker rolls their normal damage. Uh, what's the damage of your whip? Uh, damage of the whip is going to be seven on that hit. Uh, seven plus uh, your damage seven. bonus. Is that including your damage bonus roll and your extra d6 for the 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 magical damage you're doing? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Sorry, I, I guess I forgot my damage bonus. So I get that Which on every attack that every, uses a melee every weapon. Every melee weapon, yeah, exactly. Okay, so the new total is eight. <laughs> eight, well done. And, eight. and you did roll you the extra d6 that you got from casting your root I spell, did. right? Yes. Eight. I can know, it sounds a, so low a, because my roll stuck. <laughs> roll, roll a d20 for me, please. Oh, right, right, right. Where did I hit that shiz? Uh, four. <laughs> four. Four. Uh, you hit it in the it, you hit it in the left hind leg. Uh, it's got three points of armor. It's got three points of armor, so uh, it absorbs three of the eight. But okay, it's only got but four five HP. Got through? Five got through. It's only got four HP. Uh, so does that sever uh, in, the leg? In the leg, well, like, I'm just looking at my little chart. Like burst it, out blood? it 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 doesn't it doesn't double it, but it equal or exceeds the HP. So if you're two legged, you'll fall over. Um, so either way, anyway, you've basically just it's you haven't severed it completely, but you've broken it. And if it tries to yeah. attack with its left hind leg, it'll be at minus 40%. And it's obviously yeah. taken, <laughs> taken, yeah. taken damage. Indeed. Awesome. Okay. Uh, now, Strike awesome. 3, I, I have both um, Skeptocles and uh, Rex Mannheim. So it's up to you two who would like to go first. Uh, um, Skeptocles? Well, I, I was trying to look up what my damage is for the elf bow. And I'm oh, not sure. Uh, yes, I sorry. I had that at the moment ago. Uh, if you have it, then... Okay. 78 it was it's in uh, the uh, sorry I didn't actually give everybody a copy of the weapons and equipment book which is like the uh, oh uh, gotcha, gotcha. you know it's, okay. it's got it's got the weapons and equipment in it uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's really well titled one. it is yeah I would so what does the like, book cover Troy if you have your thing that you want to do in the in the <laughs> meantime the, the thing the thing is what's actually the coolest thing about this book is that it gives you all the expanded rules for like managing land and developing holdings <laughs> and like amassing like armies and stuff it's not just real estate. weapons and equipment yeah literally no it's good it's all about that uh, so the <laughs> elf bow the elf bow uh damage is 1d8 plus one. Oh, nice Sweet. And also just note down, because this might come up later, just write on your sheet that the HP of the elf bow is six. If you try to use it to block someone's axe or something, that could Got be it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I, that's, I would like to uh, shoot an arrow. Shoot this thing? Yeah. Yep. All right. So roll your elf bow okay. skill. 58 under something really high, like 85, I want to see, yeah, 85. Yeah, sure. So you hit it. So roll your one d eight plus one damage. All right. So that's uh, four points of damage. And can you please roll a location for me? That's a d twenty. Uh, let's see here. Seventeen. Seventeen is going to be its left foreleg. Its left <laughs> foreleg. Left okay. foreleg. Um, and you four. did four points of damage. It does have three points of armor, so it takes one point of damage to its to its left foreleg. This is an arrow sticking out of its weird, weird leg, and it's like ah, that's the noise it makes. How many uh, legs does okay. it have? Uh, one, two, like six, like six, six. legs. Okay, yeah. okay. got a so long way to go. All right, exactly. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, and Rex Manheim. Okay, yeah, trying trying to command spirits to attack it. Yeah, as a side note, I looked up Spirit Guardian, and while I could be wrong, it seems like you cast Spirit Guardian as something that's bound to an object. So, like, you cast it like, guard this door, and mm. they tend to attack. Uh, uh, they it's do like physical damage as yeah. opposed to magic damage. Like, oh, most spirits that's pretty do cool. magic damage. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, anyways, yeah, it's more like a trap. Cool. Uh, so, what yeah. he's going to do, and again, I don't know if this, for flavor's sake, I imagine he, like, he can see through uh, the veil, and he sees oh, this, sure. like, this huge, like, farmer dude get mauled by a yeah. wild boar <laughs> and then sees his spirit standing there still with like a, a hoe yeah. and I want that guy to just swing the, the hoe and right. swing that guy. hoe 
Swing that. Uh, roll, roll your, <laughs> roll your, uh, uh, roll I'll your spirit, my spirit of combat. combat. Uh, this thing is Let's going to get under some natural magical defenses. Okay. Are you, have you got a hundred exactly? I do. How about a 55 under a Hondo? Okay. Nice. This thing rolled, this thing rolled a 52, which is actually a, a it's, it's, so it's, it's two normal successes. I know. Um, successful so, parry against a successful attack. He blocked that exactly. hole. Exactly. It does. <laughs> so uh, the the parrying weapon takes one HP of damage. Um, <gasps> My spirit. So the parrying weapon. Uh, well, no, 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 no. 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 This guy, so this guy, because this guy uh, blocks, uh, he's just going to take a flat one magic point. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Because because the parrying okay. weapon takes damage, and you do magic point damage so it cuts through and it's like because it has natural magical defenses this particular creature okay um, so all right so but i don't through. i don't get through you don't yeah. you don't get through so you don't roll your damage you'll just do a flat one damage to its magic points for that this for now creature because it happened to roll slightly better than you <laughs> okay <laughs> run <laughs> all right now it's its turn uh, now I want to say Yanda's probably the closest at this stage, uh, so it's going to do its uh, its its fangs attack against you, Yanda. Would you like to parry or dodge? Yeah, I'd like to parry with your whip. <laughs> I'd like to parry. Okay. Uh, you can go ahead and make a roll. <laughs> this thing got a normal success. I believe I got a normal success if you God. call a 63 under 65. Oh. Norm, okay, that is a, that is <laughs> a is normal that a success. Bad success. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> instead, so your parrying weapon uh, is this thing loose down. It tries to chomp its teeth into your whip, and it gets you. The, the whip is stuck in its teeth, and you have to pull the whip through it, and it tears through the teeth on the way out. So your whip will take one HP. No, the shield. The oh, shield. shield. Oh, then you're fine. Yeah, the, well, so the shield takes one HP as well. Against yeah, the shield, and it takes one yeah. point of damage. Right, exactly. Now, on strike rank 11, Skeptocles, if you would like, uh, you can shoot a second arrow. I will do that. Yonder, do you know how to ride? Do you have a ride stat? Joe? Um, bup, 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 bup. I don't know. What does that come under? Agility? Uh, yeah, uh, it's under agility. Yeah, my ride is pretty bad. Okay. Just curious. Yeah. I have a I, I have an adjusted twenty percent oh, okay. ride. Alright. Uh for me that's a thirty seven under eighty five, uh with seven points of damage. Wow, to which uh to which location? Let's find out. <laughs> it's a nat twenty. <laughs> okay, so it's to its body. How many points of damage? Uh seven. Seven? Uh the arrow hits its body and seems to just fall harmlessly off it is <gasps> like this uh, thick chitinous boo. skin was not no. pierced was okay. not pierced by the arrow uh now the wervlish on strike rank 12. oh yeah and so i actually misread it it does both things on its oh, turn it? Oh, yeah okay. it automatically does abrasion when it does spirit combat it says every oh, okay. round it attacks with spirit combat and its own special attack of abrasion right. so it's coming in to do the spirit attack, which I think is just with okay. its arms, like this wild sort of like. This thing, uh, this thing fails its fails its uh, parry. Quite okay, so, what, so roll your. Oh yeah, I see rolling, it's spirit it's just combat. Eighty-five percent. Yeah, yeah, this is eighty-five. Okay. And uh, it got a seventy, so. It okay, that's hits. good. So it does. So it does one d six plus, plus three mm-hmm. magic points damage. Yep, that's four magic points damage. Okay, and then and it the, uh, does, it's a special, right? You yeah, do automatically does the... 1d3 uh, points of damage to every hit location. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. But while armor protects, the grinding of the sand and dust destroys armor. Uh, so you're actually, you're actually going to whittle down all the armor depending all on how much damage you do to it. All the armor all over. Yes. Okay. That's awesome. Really Great, so, so roll your d3. <laughs> you really are scrubbing the shit out yeah. of it. Yeah. <laughs> the d3 is a three. Okay, so all of it. So just to be clear, every part of its body now, except sorry, every every part, every every hit location, except for its body, which was the bit Nora was unfortunate enough to shoot at, now has zero armor. 
<laughs> so it's just like swizzled down, and it, I mean, it's not really wearing armor. You just, it's just abrading down its chitinous skin. So now it's like yes. the, pink, uh, the pink underbelly of this poor subterranean creature is now completely exposed. All right. I'm sorry, round. this poor creature? <laughs> well, I'm just trying to think of like <laughs> something that's harmed. It did mean you, <laughs> <laughs> you have. Uh, Rex Mannheim, what would you like to do this round? Rex will try to do the same thing, but he'll look for a more competent spirit than this whole <laughs> wielder. <laughs> he scans uh, the Milton. battlefield and perhaps finds a, a warrior that was struck down in a great battle that happened centuries ago. And he says, you, attack that beast. Of course, sir. Yes, and he goes through to do it. Uh, the Wervelish goes on strike rank 12, but Vilma, what would you like yeah. to do? Um... I would like to cast Blade Sharp. I should have done it before too, but I'm gonna, yeah. Blade I'll cast sharp. Blade okay. Sharp on my turn. What level of Blade Sharp would you like to cast? Two points. Two points, Two all right, so it'll have it on strike rank two. Uh, Skeptocles, are you shooting your arrow again? Uh, or would you like to do something different? So if I, if I were to cast a spell at this point, would it cost me a turn to do uh, so? Yes, it will. Okay, I'm gonna wait yeah. because there's something I wanna do, but it, I don't think this is the right time. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna shoot my <laughs> arrow again. Okay, so he's trying to um, so you're not doing that just yet. Uh, and Yanda, are you whipping? Yeah, Yanda is seeing this uh, exposed sort of pink underskin of this thing is going to whip the shit out of some of these limbs and start cutting them off! Okay, this thing's going to try and use its tongue. Uh, so your strike rank, uh, what was your deck tongue. strike rank again? One. Did you, sorry, your size strike rank. Is just Two. Two. Two, okay, so you're going to get two. How about we All go right, with so, deck strike, right? Oh, let me okay. let me also remind, you know, Whirlvish, totally a target. I've got its hit points and everything here, too. Oh, oh it, it no, it's, it's also stuck in the sandstorm. All right, so on strike rank two, it is both Yanda and uh, uh, Bilma. So who would like to go first? Oh, well, I'm just casting Blade Sharp, so I, I feel like that's a quick. Okay, so power times five. Yep, is... 60, so I'm just going to get under 60. Come on. It's a 57. <laughs> okay, so Blade Sharp 2, that means you get plus uh, 2 plus damage. Plus 2 and, and plus 10%. Plus 10% to your yeah. thing. All right. Uh, yeah. Yanda, you are Yanda. doing a whip attack. Cracks that whip. Uh, 27. Crack oh, 27. That. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's 27 <laughs> under 80, so it's regular success. A regular success. This thing is going to try and dodge. Uh, I'm cheering ooh, it you does on. Not. That is a failed, failed dodge. Failed so dodge. you just roll your normal damage. Oh, much better damage roll. Uh, that's 14 damage. To which location? To 15. Location number 15. All right. So it's that right should be... leg. Oh. Uh, oh, I thought <laughs> it was right, the left foreleg. leg. No, no, no. It's it's it's, <laughs> it's right foreleg, leg, and you did 15 damage. It now has no armor because the abraded flesh. Uh, so it just had a cheeky four points under there. So you equal or exceeds triple oh. the location's XP. <gasps> uh, the uh, arm is, sorry, the leg is uh, incapacitated. Uh, so the leg is severed or maimed and the creature becomes completely incapacitated. Yes! 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 Because you just put the yeah, things that's off, yes. Uh, <laughs> now, but Rex, however, because you're in the middle of that, that trance, you see, because you're still looking in your second sight, in your in your veil you've got there, right? And you see this um, the spirit of the crashed kid pull itself out of its body and step into the spirit world. And you can see it is covered in moon runes. And it starts to glow red. And it is pulled out of the body and begins to flutter through the spirit realm, but in a direction in the forest. And it is, doesn't look stoked. Doesn't look happy about whatever's happening to it. Ooh, it looks like it's moving with purpose. Uh, or, or perhaps against its will, it's being dragged somewhere. Oh. Oh, that's cool. Rex will inform the group. There is no time to celebrate, my friends. But the spirit of that beast is being controlled by someone or something in that forest. Hmm. <laughs> 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 Let's take a quick, quick two-minute break, then, and we'll come back uh, to that to the last, the last small portion of what remains of our adventure. So, Woo! stay tuned. Don't touch the dial, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <laughs> yeah.
All right, welcome back. Is that my job? Can I say that? Or was that one yes. of you guys supposed to do that? I just don't want to come well up. This done. is hey, my channel. Job. Look at me. Look at me. Good this job is my podcast back. now. All right. <laughs> so, I believe right. it. So, before we left, Rex Mannheim saw the freshly hewn spirit of the crashed kid uh, pull itself from its body and it had been covered in glowing red moon runes and, and it was being drawn as if against its will deeper into the forest. And Rex Mannheim pointed this out. What would everyone like to do? Pursue with all haste. Mm -hmm. Just a question. Like if I was to cast slow on this thing, would it work because it's a spirit? Like Correct. How does this no, that, that would be some, I think there's actually a duck of fell or some other dead type spell that you need to cast to be all, in order to affect the spirit. I think, I, for instance, when uh, Rex Manham tried to cast the discorporate spell, mm -hmm. if Rex Manham is, is discorporated, he can cast spells in the spirit realm. Yeah, mm. that makes sense. So, oh, cool. yeah. I tried. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Stop bringing up my failure. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I definitely co like, command the world vision, like, keep hunting. It's like. Because it does spirit stuff. <laughs> and, like, what would my will elf sense end? do? <laughs> like, would my elf sense help me since it's in a forest? Is it, I don't do know you what actually elf have elf sense. sense? Yeah, you, you you told me I had elf sense, and I wrote that down <laughs> on my thing. So I, oh, but I wasn't I? Okay. sure what I did. <laughs> uh, you know, you just got the general, you know, elvish sensibilities. You know, like <laughs> protecting the thing. No, you're okay. Well, the thing is, the only people who can see this is Rex Manheim. Gotcha. Okay. So right. he's gonna have to leave, and possibly the Wervlish. Right. Uh, that was my so assumption. Because it's also a spirit, yeah. It could uh, see. The, the, now, the only thing is, the Wervlish is, to, just to remind everyone, is like a tornado of sand in the shape of a human. That's uh, cool. So it's not super subtle. Uh, no, so yeah. So if you do command it, it's gonna tear off into this forest, chasing yeah. this thing. It's doing uh, you have to get, and you're you gonna give, give chase to it. Yeah. Don't get it in your eyes. Yeah, and careful. Where is this relative to our cart and, you know... It's, uh, it's the opposite direction of the cart and the path. So just deeper into the forest. Okay. I think we leave everything behind. We follow it now. Yes. yes. Okay. Weapons the Wurblish well. starts I charging through and, it, and, it, and it's, it's like cleaving up the forest and like, you know, ripping through branches and trees and it's... It, Skeptically, right, is totally cool with this, I'm sure. Uh, uh, yeah, and Yanda, <laughs> Yanda is happy yeah. to follow in its Essentially like, tearing through a, uh, yeah, just a, 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 a you know, big vegetation. <laughs> exactly, yeah. a blender, just blending through, like, a, a, like cleaving a path through the dense just vegetation. Green right? juice everywhere. Yeah, you and just then, get some snacks on the way. <laughs> and then you come to a clearing, and the clearing uh, has a very haphazard uh, fence set up inside it there's clearly some sort of encampment here and uh, above the encampment is fl fluttering a a flag with the the symbol of the moon rune but the flag is very sort of tattered and beaten and the, the wind is not going through and the um uh the, the the fence which has been put up is made entirely just of tree trunks with spiked tips uh you can't see anybody outside but these are too high for you to see into the encampment but all you can see is the 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 uh, the flag fluttering across Rex Mannheim you see the spirit be drawn through the fence uh, and then you see the Wervlish it's going to make chase it's going to chase right through the fence um, unless for whatever reason you would like to stop it otherwise it's going to church, church through are you cool with it going through up to you yeah, cool. I'm cool with right. it. So it, it, I, I'm it, all it, about it, disorder it, 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 and it smashes, it smashes into this wooden fence and then suddenly it's like a wood chipper. There's just like saw dust and just like it's tearing through and it takes a few seconds then it just cleaves right through into the encampment. You can hear some like raised voices and people freaking out on the inside and they're like, oh, it's a wervlish. Oh, fuck. Like, you know, oh, and they're all freaking out. <laughs> um, and then the, uh, the wervlish then comes back to Vilma uh, very, very quickly. Uh, and it uh, it communicates to you in only the way that it can communicate to you. I don't know with sand sigils or something. Uh, yeah. But it says it just says it's gone. So it has no. It can no longer chase something. It says it is gone. Ah. Uh. Do you see it, Rex? Hold. I must get closer. Okay. Rex will. Uh skulk his way forward toward the hole in the fence 
activating his second sight, which I oh, think... Oh, second sight. Yeah, I'm going to walk towards the hole in the fence, though, because I want to mm-hmm. get... I want to mm-hmm. make sure I see everything. Um, is that a power... That's a power roll, right? To like It do is power times five, yeah. True second sight. Uh, that's going to be a fail. 87 <laughs> over 75. Just oh, a, okay, bomb that's a bummer. roll. So you do still spend your magic points, but, you know, you've got lots of them. You've got that... You've got, like, that crystal that stores a bunch in it as well. Yeah. So, yeah. so you just yeah, decide where you want to take them days. from. Uh, okay, oh, <sighs> so the... Uh, but there are people that are coming to inspect this fresh hole in the fence of their encampment um there are a couple of uh uh guys who are only wearing like not loincloths but like the bottom half of like a roman suit you know the weird dress leathery dress thing Mm -hmm. uh you know one of those things and they're uh you know they've got otherwise just sort of some tattered clothing and whatever and uh they're brandishing rusted uh battle worn broken swords as they look out there and they're 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 not cleanly shaven some of them have big long beards they're dirt in their face and they look out and say in the name of the red emperor who goes there who goes out here Uh, uh." they seem to like not see you properly even though you're like you know 12 soup cans in front of them which is not far far. i thought i was about 12 away Um, so close (laughs) yeah (laughs) It's like three uh, feet. <laughs> it's like <laughs> all right. So this is this is not good for uh, Rex. Rex will will turn to the group and, and motion them forward. Wervless is just sitting there buzzing away. Mm-hmm, yeah, uh, Yonder will come forward. Yeah, Yonder on? will will come forward. Whip at the ready. Uh, these guys and just and- put, stand right in front of the hole of this fence. You know, well, these guys are literally like stooping into the fence, like looking out into the wilderness. Oh. And this close, you can see their eyes are sort of glazed over. They literally, they, they seem like they can't see. Like, who goes there? Where's the hole in our fence? Ugh. All right, so she's not going to say anything at first. She's going to walk up and like just look at them. And they still don't seem to react to her or no, yeah. or focus they're, on. They're her. only looking in out through the fence hole. Okay. They're not that. Uh, sorry, is the yet, fence hole real see. tiny? How many soup That's cans it. wide is the fence hole? <laughs> it's, it's, it's the exact, it's the exact um, silhouette of a human, gr- full-grown human man, like the rough, roughly the silhouette of a priest, like a priest shape. <laughs> um, it just like okay, so it was yeah. full-size human. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's you can get through there. Very easily. Okay. No, 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 These guys are just yeah. I'm you're not just walking up out. to them, right? Yeah. 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 They, they don't acknowledge you. They're still looking, looking like almost oh, directly through geez. you. So weird. Weird. What what is step this? outside and face your fate. She says, standing in front of the opening. Come back they from blink. behind your wall, you cowards. They look at each other. I don't know what it is. We best go talk to the emperor about it. Yes, I think we shall. And they turn their back to the hole in the fence and walk into the encampment. He's can I here? <laughs> oh, I can, think I know what's going on here. This is cool. Can I go? Uh, but this is a fence, right? It's yeah. It's, it's like a tall, wood. Like, wood. Yeah. Fence. Can Craig and I go above? You can. You can when run wind above walk the fence. over. Yeah. Yeah. Ex- for sure. You got. And at the same time, can you have to just step through the man-sized, the Correct. pre-sized hole? Hole. Yes, you can. Great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Leave yeah. I want a bird's eye view. Yeah, I can't do anything down. cool. <laughs> uh, what are Rex and uh, Skeptically's doing? Uh, I'm going to follow in. Um, but I guess one more. Oh, yeah, I don't know how helpful this is going to be. Uh, if I cast Silent Sphere, they won't be able to hear us, but then we won't be able to hear them. Mm. So I'm not sure if that's going to be helpful. So I'm just going to be very stealthy and follow in behind. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, Rex, are you going in last, or are you? Uh... Yeah, Rex will go in last, and he's just—he's okay. got nothing in his hands. He's just walking forward. I think that we could probably follow these guys. He's not very stealthy, um, yeah. but rather than just kill them, they said they want to go to the emperor. Let's just follow mm-hmm. them. Uh, can everybody, uh, as soon as you pass the threshold, be it through the hole or over the fence, please make a power roll. So power times Ooh. five. Oh, hey. oh dear. dear. Oh, that'll do. I got some do. new dice. <laughs> Although. The other ones did give as much as they took. <gasps> yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh-oh. I saw all zeros and then I was like, oh, wait, no, that okay. means a 10. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 10 under 75. I got a 13 under 75. Okay. Yeah, 81 over 60. Okay. 
75 over 50. Okay, so. <sighs> Love that. As Great. you As you all cross over here, what you see is all of a sudden, beyond the fence, these tall Roman-like structures made of red brick and a blazing red moon above you. And like there's constantly like confetti and you can hear trumpet blasts and everything's very exciting. The, 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 the encampment on this side of the fence is made like it's, it's, it's like made of uh, gorgeous, you know, rich golds and deep bronzes. These, these huge structures that are, that are here in the middle of this encampment, which is not very big, is like this, uh, like almost like pyramid structure that leads to the top of a throne, which is currently seated empty. And behind that throne is a behind that structure is a is a glorious um, palace, like the beginnings of a palace, which stretches out. And on throughout these uh, these streets, many, many like proud soldiers walk and they're in this gleaming armor and and uh, they are they're basking in the glory of the red moon above. That is what Vilma and Yanda see. <laughs> Amazing. Rex Mannheim and Skeptocles uh, see a, a, a group of three very, mal, very malnourished uh, veterans uh, <laughs> and some very uh, shitty tents made of, um, like, they, they seem to be, like, some of them are patched together with clothing or, like, bits of straw and some of them, like, patched, you know, made haphazardly with, um, a, like, a discarded cart and uh, some some canvas. There is a there is a chair in the middle of the encampment which sits on, on top of, like, a, like a, like a half-broken crate. Uh, behind that chair is a smaller tent. Uh, like, it looks like a tent that could fit, like, you know, maybe a, a couple of children, uh, but it has a very big, uh, again, like a red flag sitting at the front of it. Uh, and these, uh, when you, when you walk in here, these, these haphazard, um, very poorly dressed, very unkempt men, uh, turn and look at you and they brandish their, their, their swords and, and they say, yo, uh, who goes there? Stop, stop going. Whereas, uh, Yanda and, uh, Vilma. See instead these very proud soldiers with massive, the most big, like cleaving axes you've ever That's seen. Like cool. you, sir, stay there. Do not <laughs> come any closer to the Red Emperor. <laughs> what would everyone like to do? <laughs> oh, we could just burn this place down. <laughs> it's fine. Um, yeah, this is interesting, right? Because we don't. We don't know that's what they see. The, yeah. yeah. Correct. See yeah. The, so the I'm glamour. sure this will be not funny at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm so aggro and I'm so sorry, but that's just Gagarth for you. I'm going <laughs> to command the Whirlvish to wreak havoc and to hunt yeah. every last one of these lunar... So, Oh, what does my Whirlvish see, though? Does it know what the hell I'm talking about if I command it to do uh, the this? Uh, it, the, the Whirlvish is... Um... <laughs> Attacked that it's, incredible it's, it's, soldier yeah. in that sterling <laughs> armor. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. So it's hard for you. To, you don't know what the Wervlish sees. I'll just tell you. Okay. That yeah. So yeah. I tell it to go after these lunar empire warriors. You know, sort of mm -hmm. in front okay. of us. Yeah. I commanded uh, to attack. Okay. That's that sounds normal enough. So I mean, it, the, the Wervlish uh, looks up at you and looks around and then just uh, just pushes itself into like the this to occupy the same space as one of these guys who's brandishing a very shitty looking sword uh he immediately starts screaming as he takes um uh, three points of damage to every hit location and he's not wearing armor so he just <laughs> he just uh, like he just pretty much drops dead because he just took you know like 12 points of damage oh my god um at, at which point uh the these this things start to flutter what what uh, the people who uh, are being glamoured instead see is the wervlish attack this this guy and his armor fall to pieces and then uh like this sort of black ooze spill out of the sky and then there's a big snap it's like a, like, like the world flutters and you instead then see the true man beneath Hmm. Uh, and he falls to the ground. So it's like all of his, all of a sudden, like he mm. grew a beard and he didn't look like that anymore. Yeah. So this will be your first indication that something strange is going on. Uh, Rex Manheim and Skeptocles, what would you like to do? I, I wish I had some sort of intimidate because I want to say like, you're allowed numbered, lay down your weapons. <laughs> and You can try well, that still. You have an intimidate skill. Yeah, it's not very good. Uh, but yeah, he, he just sees all the super <laughs> You could always you, augment it, yeah. You could augment it. Oh, that's yeah. right. I'll use the power of the moon. All right, so I'll try yeah. a moon thing. Uh, Thirty-eight yeah. under seventy. 
Okay, so you get plus 20%. Plus 20% to my sad, sad intimidate, which is 15. So it's a 35. Soldiers, lay down your weapons or you will soon be fodder for my future battles. And I rolled a 55. Okay. He ignores you because the soldier that's there is crying because he's sitting next to his friend. Davistos, what happened? Why? Oh, God, why? Please. Oh, God, what a horrible, horrible way to die. Oh, the pain you must have felt. The excru- Oh, he's still kind of conscious. Oh, God, this is terrible. Oh, give me the strength to, to put him. And he, and he takes like out a cloth and he covers it over this guy's mouth to try and just asphyxiate him. As he's going, <laughs> just like, oh, just any, no, relieve him of his horrid, horrid pain put upon him by that terrifying creature of <laughs> sand and dust. Um, they don't, so he doesn't notice, unfortunately, Rex, that you're trying to intimidate him. You, you, you find Damn. Him. And that, uh, that young, would be my action, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> sure. yeah no. uh, sorry, yeah. Skeptically's. Um, Skeptically is really good at aerial Pilates, so she just kind of <laughs> wants to find a place to, like, climb up and get with us uh, so that she has a height advantage out of their melee weapon range um, mm-hmm. and and kind of perch up somewhere where she can get a good shot at somebody. Okay, um, so you crawl on top of, of one of the way. nearby shitty tents. That's, yeah. that's fine. Yep, so you're spreading <laughs> on top of it. Uh, Yanda, what would you like to do? Is Yanda's illusion broken or not? I can't tell what's going on. It's it's, 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 ha- it's half. You've clearly seen something's wrong. Like half this illusion's broken. So if you would like, you can make another power roll. Oh, uh, we still okay. see. Yeah. We still see the other soldiers though. It's just the you one see, that got attacked. Big, yeah, he he Didn't, like broke out of the illusion, ah, so it looks very strange. Okay, so, so like, yeah, something's there? off. Yeah. She she yeah. she shakes her head and <laughs> rolls an eighty-one over fifty. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and uh, no, it's still something something strange. But something uh, strange. Well, I mean, her natural incl- inclination is just to attack. I think, uh, I think in this case, I'm going to have to go something. She believes right at this point that the lunar emperor actually is here and yes. that 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 um somehow he has teleported to these foothills nearby and has hidden his encampment with this illusion on the outside that Correct. it is just a normal uh bivouac or something and yeah. she uh fears with what she sees that she will die that she mm-hmm. will die if she tries to fight this, but she is going to do it anyway, uh, spurred on okay. by her hatred for them and uh, her following of Babister Gore. This is she must do this. So, what I think that that means is she is going to pour uh, all of her soul into her rune magic, okay. and <laughs> I, she is going to cast Berserker and oh, go yes, absolutely ape nice. shit. Nice. Uh, I'm glad I. Th- yeah, thinking that this is <laughs> the yeah. end. That this is okay, her final sure. stand against the Lunar Empire. All right. Um, so yeah, so that would be. Uh, oh geez, you know what? I'm sorry, I didn't come prepared with with the rune, but I can get it in one second. Talk amongst yourselves. Uh, am I able to try to attempt my arrow trance again from before we start a? a you a can thing? just just hold that thought I for just one hold moment. It. Okay. It's either uh, it's either beast or death. And it's, it's death a and beast. Spell. It's, oh, yeah, I, so I can either use or, either yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, okay, great. Um, I will. I would use death and considering that, yeah, she thinks she's going to die. Um, <laughs> I think, oh man, this is interesting because it's like, I want to boost it to, to lower my chances of failure, but I'm not sure how to. Uh, maybe, maybe your battle for this. I mean, yeah. Since since the whole intention. I mean, then couldn't you always just use battle? I don't know. But whatever. well, I've used it to augment it. You can mm. only just use it once per session. Yeah, once per session. That makes to sense. Um, okay. Uh, you know what? I'm going to change up. It's the same. It's like it's the same number basically as okay. battle. What I think I'm going to do is, she not only thinks she's going to die, but using berserker is part of the intention is that these well-groomed well-trained soldiers might lose their their um their their gut their uh what's the word i'm looking for they might they they might get scared a little bit to get out of their rhythm so i'm mm-hmm. going to try to augment with intimidation so she's just going to okay, like sure. ah! 
and show her fearlessness okay. and go full beast mode okay. and uh, see if she can augment with intimidation and she does with a 29 okay. under 35 okay, and, so or sorry under 40 plus 20% and to your uh, so plus 20% roll. so now it's a 95 for the death rune and I rolled nice. a 58 so, okay. uh, and right, so great. reduce your room, po room points by two. You've got a hell of a lot of bonuses now. So. Yeah. So she goes full berserker, and this is this is going to be nuts. Uh, and <laughs> yeah. the, the, seeing and, that it's like a huge waste for these like regular guys, yeah. but man, they are gonna they're gonna be in rough shape. <laughs> and uh, Vilma, what would you like to do? Um. Yeah, I think I would just attack, wouldn't I? I'm in the sky with uh, with Craig. <laughs> no. Although, how like we see like a full it, what we're seeing is a full camp, right? You like you feel like you're in a full city. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, this exactly. is massive. Okay, so then, you know, Vilma loves to fight, but she wants to keep fighting for many years to come still. And uh, I think I want to try. Maybe demoralize? Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. To uh, make, to, to the, what I perceive as the sort of the guards that have come up to us, right? Yeah. Um, one of which is on the ground and the other one is like trying to yeah, so for the other one, help his mate. Yeah. To make them lose faith in their side's ability <laughs> to win. Yes. Yeah. It's good. You can make them run away. Uh, so yeah. you can yet yeah, roll your, uh, I think I believe it's a spirit magic spell. So power times five. Yep. That's a 30 under 60. There you go. Okay. And now you have yep. to uh, see if you can overcome uh, the target's power. So you have to roll on this, uh, this check. You just need to roll under an 80. Because you're comparing well, your power, your power to this guy's power. Yeah. Okay. Even though my power is a sixty. Uh yeah. No, I'm looking at a chart. Sorry. Oh, great. And that's the, the chart. result is eighty. Charted yeah. up. Okay, yeah. forty-five. Okay. Okay. This guy uh, can only now use defensive and healing spells, uh, and he uh, cannot defend himself fully. I uh, can can defend himself fully, but can only attack at half his normal skill. And he's uh, <laughs> he's he's just he's just he turns and he just surrenders immediately. He looks up at Yonder, who's in a berserker, and says, "Oh, please, please, no, don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't." Uh, and what does Yonder see? Yonder uh, sees a like a cowering, dressed a fully dressed man who is cowering. Yes, before yeah. him. But uh, uh, ber berserkers <laughs> don't care. So please just make an attack roll against him. Uh, <laughs> all your attack rolls are now ninety five because you're in berserker mode. Yeah. So uh, is that what it actually is, or? That is, yeah. It just you just get a it just becomes uh, well, ninety five like the most it can be or something. No, no, it can be higher than that. Um, Berserker. It says uh, increases your attack skills by half again. So I feel like it oh, should be one twenty if it's eighty. Oh, sorry, I read all con rolls in ninety five. So yes, so one hundred and twenty. So yeah, yeah so one hundred and twenty. Okay. She's just like. Yeah. Ah! Smashes with the whip. That is a uh, twenty eight under one hundred and twenty. <laughs> okay. Uh, Oh god, so close to a special success. That's the advantage to being uh, over a hundred, right, right? Right. Just a regular success. So roll your normal damage. Uh, that's seven points of normal damage. Okay, and roll a location for me. Uh, location is a fourteen. Fourteen. Uh, seven <laughs> points of damage. You said. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So you whip off. Uh, his right arm, like your, your <laughs> arm wraps around his right arm and it breaks it and he goes like, oh, oh, I he just why? Why? Oh, God. <laughs> okay. uh, at which point you hear a bellowing voice call well, Vilma and uh, Vilma and uh, Yonder. Yonder hear a bellowing voice call from that, that big palace the throne? nearby you, yeah, the near behind the throne room. He's like, "Stop this immediately! Stop in my <laughs> realm! Stop your fight in the name of me, the Red Emperor!" And he steps out of his palace and onto his big throne. He is he is tall and covered in long flowing robes, and he is mighty to behold. And he wears like this huge crown, which is gleaming with red energy of the red moon. And he's eating a pine's apple, and he sits <laughs> a, sits down onto his throne, and he he is he is 
thickly, he's like, he's like Conan, like, you know, he's like thick sinewy muscles. His thews mm-hmm. are glistening, glistening with, you know, oils and things that, you know, rich people wear all the time. And he's been perfectly shaved and he looks down at you. But Skeptocles, the aptly named Skeptocles, <laughs> the situation. And right. Rex Manheim. Yeah, I don't know, guys. <laughs> instead, you see the Red Emperor who emerges from the tent says, stop this immediately. <laughs> in the name of me, the Red Emperor. <laughs> and he gets onto that little chair that's sitting on top of that, you know, half-broken crate. And he's eating a pine's apple. And he's, he's short. He's not particularly tall. And he's wearing, he's wearing, like, red cloth. He's wrapped around himself. And he's got, like, what looks to be, like, maybe it was an old mug, which has been... that had the bottom snapped off of it. And he's put it on his head. Mm. And he's painted, like, a red circle on it. Uh, and he's also a baboon. <laughs> A baboon. Um, he's a he's a he's a little like a baboon, and he's eating a a thing. <laughs> Got this in the name of the Red Emperor. Oh surrender, Sur- surrender your pines apples. Yeah, those of you who have them, surrender your pines apples <laughs> to me, the Red Emperor. <laughs> um, can I? Can I? Put my arm down, like from the like uh, from Craig, and say, "Yonda, now is the time <laughs> to like grab Yonda to like sort of bring you through the sky towards this." <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, you can. Uh, uh, Skeptically's, what would you like to do? Um, boy, Aerotrance sounds really fun, <laughs> but kind of like I'm seeing this. Uh, you said it was like an ape look like? He's a baboon. He's it's literally a baboon. a baboon. Like, you know the baboons at the zoo? One of those yeah. is talking. It's a talking baboon. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like, look. Yeah, like, look stop, at my nails. Stop in the name of the emperor. Um, and I'm just like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really? thanks, Brian. <laughs> So what I would like to do, um, <laughs> I would like to use um, spirit magic and cast hot foot and just make his left foot really hot so he can only <laughs> hop on the right one. Okay. <laughs> sure. So make, make a power times five roll to okay. uh, cast hot foot. I'll look that up. Uh. <laughs> I rolled an eleven. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> Tiger receives a burning pain in one foot chosen by the under, caster and cannot stand on that five. foot for the rest of the melee round. <laughs> 11 under <laughs> 75. <laughs> if he can't hop around, he falls prone. <laughs> the game master should determine the effects for creatures with more than two legs. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you cast it. Uh, and as you surround, oh bloody hell, bloody, oh bloody <laughs> hell, oh gosh, my foot, oh it is so hot, ah, ble- and he's trying to stamp his foot and he drops his pine's apple and the pine's apple rolls across the floor, uh, off the floor, the ground, yeah, for those of you who are not being, uh, don't have an illusion, um, and he's freaking out, oh, okay, he's freaking and he's just completely, now it's just like everything else is on the back burner for this guy, the foot is his most important situation right now. Uh, Rex Mannheim, what would you like to do? I think Rex, uh, understands there's something going on here because he sees the the fury in uh, two of his allies' <laughs> eyes and so he thinks that maybe this guy's got some magic, but he also thinks he can take him. So he wants to reach down for one of the weapons that the, uh, the fallen soldiers have yep. and just like run to try and attack it. Okay. <laughs> uh, where's my, uh, my weapons and equipment book? Uh, so you, 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 you pick up a... Um, a broken bronze sword. A broken bronze sword. Uh, Perfect. Is it a broadsword? It is a broadsword. Do you have a broadsword skill? I do have broadsword. So that's okay. Nice. Yeah. Uh, that I'll try to augment with the moon. Okay. Make make your uh, make your moon roll. Oh, oh well. I, you tell me seventy. Oh God, it's a seventy-five. But I think my moon is a seventy. Oh. Go back yeah, 75 over 70. Oh. Okay, so oh, you I was thinking fail, about pow, yeah. You fail the rune, so you actually take minus 20% from all <laughs> further rolls using that rune until you can spend a day meditating on the rune. So you, this current roll is unaffected, but any other moon rolls are at minus 20 until you spend right, a day. So I've got a very low chance of hitting, but okay. this is his big standoff. He wants to show <laughs> that he can too. also handle himself yeah. in battle. Ah! Runs with okay. the broadsword. Oh, oh, oh. 
a seven under 25. So I actually seven, hit with it. Nice. Under 25, a seven is not just a regular success. Uh, the baboon was far too distracted by his foot. Uh, so the damage of the uh, the, broad, the broken broadsword is going to be uh, 1d4 plus your damage bonus, which, which is on is your Which is 1d6. Character. Okay. Wow, really? That's, yeah. That's big boy. <laughs> he has an 18 uh, size. And, uh, all right. Oh, that's right. He's huge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I forgot about that. All right. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be five points of damage. To and, which location? Uh, on a 19 on a d20. You rolled a 19? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you <laughs> you, draw, you pick up the sword <laughs> and you run towards this baboon <laughs> who's like... 12 soup cans ahead of you and you're like ah, <laughs> and you just like and you, and you just you know that mug that's on his head you cleave that in two and how many points of damage did you do? Five points of damage okay and then the sword just clefts and you cleave his head in two <laughs> and, and oh the God. and then the sword is like stuck in his head at which point as soon as that happens the illusion drops and everybody else sees what else is going on? I feel like I like flung, flung, flung yeah, yonder yeah. like through the sky towards yeah. this like this as the like, illusion yeah. breaks. <laughs> like, yeah. That's the moment when yeah. Rex gets in there and splits the head. And then and then his last the baboon's last words were, but I was going to summon Red Eye the Ball <laughs> as a boss battle. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> your natty 19 ruined the boss battle, Valley. <laughs> oh, you're a better man than I, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> the boss battle. <laughs> oh. Oh this is Rex's God. moment. <laughs> so a couple of other, a couple of other soldiers nearby who have come out of their tents. And they're holding on, and one of them's eating a can of soup, um, actually. And then, you know, they're, they're looking around, <laughs> and they're looking around like, what What happened to the palace? Where'd the Red Emperor go? Oh, what is this hell that I've woken into? This fresh, tormented hell? Oh, are where you is all, that grandest? Uh, are you all followers of the Red Emperor? Yes, we're soldiers, and we remember being here fighting in the very long war. And then there were rumors that we had lost the war but no but then the red emperor found us and uh and uh told you us that you came and willingly saw, oh, we, yes we're, we're we are lunar soldiers we we have to fight for our people all, uh, okay, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> all right um unless anyone intervenes the world tears these stops. guys to pieces <laughs> uh, just tear them apart <laughs> action just, scene. Yeah, tears them one out there, they're screaming oh what is this <laughs> one guy again who woke up who has been thinking he's been living in like this grandiose palace for the last however long, uh, <laughs> wakes up into like a tent, is freaking the hell out, opens up his tent, sees like a, du- a living dust storm tearing his friends to pieces shortly before he dies. And he's probably the most confused a person has ever been just before they die. Um, <laughs> in the tatters, the tatters of this, uh, this encampment, uh, what do you say to each other now that you have felled the quote unquote red emperor? <laughs> well, I, let me go first yeah. <laughs> because oh, but sorry but, so, but I should say because you are still in berserker mode you are also probably running around with the wervelish like hewing yeah. these yeah. people so uh, basically well. what happens is Yana completely loses her mind and when the illusion is broken she's still f- so freaked out and she just hears them say we're soldiers of the lunar empire and she goes with the wervelish mm-hmm. and she just starts like tearing people apart and then she breaks down in a puddle of like uncontrollable sobs as like this you know the the intensity of the whole thing and her like not thinking she was about to die and about to like sacrifice herself fighting the red emperor <laughs> is all like not real and not true and she just is like overcome and and starts to weep and then she just collapses in a pile in the corner and uh, passes out unconscious <laughs> as per the spell Berserk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, well, while while the, while the berserker is, is completely well incapacitated yeah, when the spell expires. Yes. Oh my goodness! Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah. So basically, uh, how do you guys uh, react to each other? <laughs> but she's sleeping. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. she's sleeping it off. As Yonda is like climbing, I, I, as uh, I'm sorry, as uh, spectac- uh, um, <laughs> spectacles or skeptically, skeptically is, <laughs> is climbing down, um, and, and sees Yonda 
incapacitated. Um, she remembers she's got that brooch and some healing. So as she's like trying, doesn't know if it's gonna work, but as she's like trying to revive Yonda, she's like, well, um, not exactly how I thought it was gonna go, but at the same time, I'm not mad at it. <laughs> <laughs> Do I, am uh, I able to resuscitate Yonda in any way or just uh, gotta yeah, wait you it can, out? Uh, how, would you, how would you like to do it? Uh, you can do, uh, you can sing, you can meditate, you could, uh, you could use some sort of magic, you could use Well, a- I had the heal, uh, I could, I had that special brooch from the beginning of our Oh, that's adventure. what you're going to do. Yeah, sure. Oh, sure, 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 sure. Yeah, so just do, just do it a power times five roll. See how you get with that. To, okay. To, to try and imbue Yanda with the... Yeah. Uh, 21 under 75. Oh, okay. So, Yanda, you wake up like, like... She starts to come back. Yeah. I'm alive. It's... What happened? She looks at her limbs. There's no blood. (laughs) Everything's still attached. Oh, there's there's, there's blood, just not yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Sorry, (laughs) she's covered in blood. (laughs) blood. I I feel no pain. I I think I'm okay. I think so. And then she looks around. Where are we? Because it just looks like a regular shitty camp, you know? Rex, Rex Manheim yeah, can explain. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm just over the baboon, or Vilma's like looking over like, it was just a baboon this whole time. Did not know the Red Emperor was a baboon. <laughs> <laughs> I they will got- bring evidence that we have slain him this day. And uh, I'll decapitate him. <clears throat> okay. Rex Manheim, what, what would you do? That's your kill. Oh, shit. <laughs> your fresh kill, too. That is my well, kill. Yeah. Uh, Rex will slowly walk eight chicken soup cans forward. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's like a foot and a half. Yeah. And and as he does so, he removes his cowl. And uh, oh you gosh. see the back of his head is just like all bald and scarred. Ooh. And he, uh, he sits down on the Red Emperor's throne and... <laughs> takes off his veil and we see that his eyes are missing. Oh, his shit. Eyes. There's just like two X's of scars where <laughs> eyes used to be. And he feels around for the little crown that the Red Emperor was wearing. <laughs> the little Places the <laughs> half, half of it on his head <laughs> and then begins meditating for an hour to discorporate again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, and, uh, well, uh, with that, I mean, I assume you'll go back to the town of Pine eventually yeah. and you give them the good news, whether or not you tell them uh, you're actually just being hassled by some uh, some poorly taken advantage of and magically enchanted luna, former lunar soldiers and a uh, very powerful baboon wizard. <laughs> or if you tell them that you did actually fell the Red Emperor and he won't be coming here anymore and please give us all of your Pine's apples is uh, certainly up to you. <laughs> However, what does happen is everybody... Uh, ooh, I roll a six. Everybody increases their reputation by six percent. Oh! So in the, in your next adventure, you would then uh, you know you would have a higher higher chance of people knowing you for your great deeds. That makes uh, my yeah. reputation six <laughs> percent. <laughs> and wait, somebody got a reputation during character creation. Who was yeah, that? Yeah, that's mine. Is nine now? Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Mm-hmm. There you um, go. And, and to be clear, you know, Velma considers them all pa- part of her pack now. So, oh. if you want to leave, you're going to have to flee. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's all. Otherwise, Yanda's we're all, sticking all together. <laughs> yeah, it's like Yanda's spending, all spending a weekend getting drunk with a bikey gang, and then Monday rolls around. You're like, anyway, I got to go to work. So, what do you mean, brother? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Come yeah, with us. Yeah, exactly. like, oh, oh, this is awkward here. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, bro? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. So, uh, did everyone have a fun time? Like, yeah, 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 so nice. it was yeah. amazing. That's good. So now what would happen is what you would do is uh, similar to Call of Cthulhu if you've played that, you go through any skill or rune or passion that you checked. uh, You uh, then try and roll a D100 over that skill and if you or rune or passion. And if you roll over it, that it will go up by a number of percent indicated by a D6 roll. 
So that's how you uh, you you increase. You would also um, with this a full proper adventure, you would you would have got some gold and stuff. And uh, the, the thing you use gold for in this game is to actually buy your spells and to also purchase mm. training, which is a way to increase other skills. So um, it also do you ever increase your abilities, your characteristics rather? Uh, very, very rarely. It's usually only like through magical items. So they didn't come up, but if you had eaten a pine's apple, it would give you a temporary uh, bonus oh. to your to your con, like your actual core con. How foolish of yes. us! I know, I know. Yes, which is you know why the uh, they also um, if you bite into a pine's apple, instantly restores all of your magic points, which is why the baboon. Now, the, good storytelling, Brian, but this is why the baboon was able to maintain <laughs> such an elaborate illusion for such a long time, and why he needed more pine's apples to, uh, to, to continue that. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, that's it. fine. Yeah, that was a great story. Was yeah. Yeah. Did you just make that yeah. up for this, or yeah, like you is ran it the, yeah, from yeah, something? They ra- ran that one off the dome. I mean, it was essentially someone said you should run like a seven samurai type story for him. Like, okay, yes, yeah, so like a village is being hassled by some bandits or you mm-hmm. might be familiar with it's the same plot from three amigos oh that's it's awesome. the exact plot from three amigos yeah it's um, fantastic it's the exact plot from three amigos it was it was I mean, awesome yeah. i greatly appreciate the um the introduction to the system. Uh, I'm glad we yeah. got another juicy combat in here. And I just, uh, I said it last uh, episode and I want to say it again. I love that you can incapacitate someone without killing them. And that is just yeah. like by the book. It's like when you take out somebody's arm or their leg or whatever, with enough they're damage, down. like they're done. Like they are, they cannot fight anymore. And, and the fact that that is always one die roll away at any moment in any round for you too. Yeah. It's like, it, it makes every round much more exciting, I feel like, because yeah. you're not like, oh, well, we know it's going to take at least three rounds mechanically, even if we do well, to get all the hit points. You know, you never know what any swing could do, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. And not to turn the whole thing to an ad, but everyone made their characters using the two new um, cults books, which are like the Player's Guide to the Earth Pantheon of Gods and the Player's Guide to the Lightbringer, the Storm Gods and whatnot. Um, so, if you're interested in RuneQuest... Uh, and you want to get started as a player or a GM, like you can pick up the starter set or if you pick up the core book and then you can just pick up the the player guide that you want. And the core book has a bunch of cults in it, but if you really want to deep dive like we did with our characters in this, you can go pick one of those, which are coming out at Gen Con, which Woo! might be now or it might be next week or it might be last <laughs> week, depending on where we're doing this. Um, but they're coming out, they're released at Gen Con uh, exclu- exclusively at the con. And then uh, the the week after, they'll be available worldwide. So, uh, and yeah, to our, to our friends that are here, they already have them. So, be jealous. Mine are on eBay <laughs> in the next 10 exactly. minutes. Yes. Uh, I just want to say... Thank you so much to uh, the wonderful cast of players. So, Nora, Josephine, Troy, and Joe, you're wonderful. And particularly to Joe and Troy for uh, letting me um, come in and essentially baboon Red Emperor your <laughs> podcast, your, your show. Uh, let me let me sit in the GM's chair. Um, I really appreciate the trust you had in me. Uh, I hope it, hope it worked out. And there was no coup. I didn't plug my own Patreon or anything. So, let's <laughs> Um, Brian, you are welcome in that yeah. chair anytime, my man. You, you are yeah, fantastic. You. It was excellent work. Loved the baboon. Great oh, yeah. baboon yes. work. Yeah. Uh, I pictured that whole scene very well. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, yes. Sounds like you did a good job. Yeah. <laughs> Picturing it. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, it's, it's been a pleasure having you again. This has been another great installment of Friends of the Pod. It is great to be friends with Chaosium. They put out such great games, and we know we'll be back with more of this somewhere down the line. Whether it's more RuneQuest or more of any of the other amazing games you play, there is more Friends in the Pod in the future with uh, Brian and, and Chaosium. We're looking forward to it. Until next time, everybody, uh, take it easy, and uh, we, hope, uh, we hope you check out the, the Earth Goddesses and the Lightbringers and uh, all the wonderful stuff, the supplements and Red Book of Magic that, that RuneQuest has to offer. What an amazing system and an amazing world. Check it out. Try it out. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.